Everybody came to hear what we had to say about Matrix and mind control. Check? Anybody see the movie? I know y'all all saw it, right? Well, we're going to get deep into it. Now, now I know all of y'all, since you all are, 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 are graduates of the gathering, y'all don't go sit in front of the movies just to be entertained, do you? Y'all take notes at the movies because I know who's been my student. I see them in the movies with a clipboard. <laughs> now, if y'all ain't going into the movies with clipboards or with tapes so that you could be making notes to yourself, then you are being entrained. You're being entrained to feel good about what's going on on the screen. You are one of Big Brother's best kept secrets. Now, I'm going to tell you how they're settling up with technology. There's two different types of mind control. And we're going to deal with the first type of mind control for part one before we break. The first kind of mind control will then let you know what's happening with the second kind of mind control. The first kind of mind control gets real deep. This is why your metaphysical antennas got to be up at full tilt while I'm talking. Now, all of y'all here, how many of y'all into at metaphysics, the deep kind of metaphysics. Show, show a hand. All right, not too many of y'all into that deep metaphysics. Now, metaphysics is going to have to be the quote-unquote religion of tomorrow. If it isn't, you're fucked. Totally and absolutely. If you don't understand metaphysical principles, forget going to school, forget going to work, well, go to work. Just be blissful, and when time comes, when they throw the dirt on you, then you know, just cash in. But if you are about evolving, it is time you open up that metaphysical grave that had been dug for you, the part of you, the spark that lays buried. That is what's going to open you up. That's what's going to give you the ability to escape your metaphysical mind. Damn all of what it is they're showing you out here. This is the illusion. If you saw Matrix, it told you it's the illusion. But you didn't have to go to see Matrix because we've been telling you that for 25 years. And I know the elders have been telling you that longer than that from inside. Okay? Two types of mind control. Stay with me. Some of y'all are not going to be able to stay with me. Some of y'all are going to have to sleep. It's all right. I'm going to speak to that other side. The part that is awake. Two types of mind control. The first, and again, what I wrote down here came from inspiration. In the nighttime, when people are sleeping, I stare out at the sky, the window, and this is what you're going to have to do to pick up. Let that melatonin and melanin start to secrete, and then start picking up that information. The first kind of mind control can be viewed as consciousness containment and manipulation through biological, psychological, etheric, and spiritual colonization and terraforming. Now, what do I mean by that? What am I meaning by that? Consciousness containment and manipulation through biological, psychological, etheric, and spiritual colonization is based upon the terraforming of the blood crystals, of the blood matrix, of the flow of life and light that is now inside of you. Everybody is getting hip to how they're electronically playing with your brain. And by nature alone, your awareness of it creates specific types of light codes that help you to recognize it subconsciously and bypass the programming. It isn't working just to, to shove a chip in your head anymore. Because the awareness factor, people outgrow it. Just like you give somebody a cigarette for the first time, and they start choking and coughing. The same principle when they put that chip inside of your head. Your body tends to become accommodating of it, and if your consciousness level is strong enough, you bypass the circuitry. They're finding out more and more that mental manipulation Biological manipulation isn't working at the level they are currently practicing. So how have they gone? This is what we're going to get into.
The second form of mind control is technological interfacing of gadgets with bioelectrical neuronal sites in the brain and the nervous system. Let me check that again for you. Technological interfacing with gadgets or of gadgets with bioelectric neuronal sites in the brain and throughout the nervous system. That's the technical part. That's the one we'll get into after we go to the brain. Now, the topics for mind control include displacement of consciousness, the filter of experience, electronic dissolution and disturbance and rearrangement of your memory. That includes your archetypal memory. That includes you not being able to interface with the information that your ancestors left in the blood genes. And how are they going to do that? Another form is condensed knowledge so that you work within specific parameters and nothing else. Four or five, reality and culture is a language construct. Reality and culture is a language construct. Six, now check, and very carefully, eating is a form of information transference. Let me repeat that to you. Eating is a form of information transference. Now, I'm going to let that sit in and digest a little bit. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about and why it is that they got to get to your food. And why you got to be doubly and triply careful of what it is you put into your mouth as sustenance. Seven, the lockdown in third dimensional space equals time reality through genetic reconstruction. Let me repeat that. The lockdown in third dimensional space is equal to time reality through genetic reconstruction. In other words, your genes are being manipulated to maintain the ceiling of your awareness so that you will have no light code transmissions filtering through the specific filter of experience that they're going to give you. So your experience is going to be given to you so that your experience now amounts to being you building your own imprisonment. <clears throat> Eight, synthetic telepathy. That's part of the, uh, the, 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 the technological and how they're going to play synthetic te 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 telepathy on you. S people are now who have the chips in their head have been experiencing synthetic telepathy. That was the brother that we brought to Gary Bird and to the City Sun that time, Brian Wrong, when we exposed the fact that the chips were being put into people's heads all through the prison system. Who was there when we did that? You were there at the time. We exposed that. People thought we were crazy. But the, the sun, that's why they shut the sun down, people, because the sun was dropping some serious science about what was going on on the metaphysical tip and what they were doing, the government's um, uh, control. <clears throat> Mind control is frequency warfare. Let me say that again. Mind control is frequency warfare. They ain't got to shoot no more bullets. They don't have to strap you down like they did Dr. Frankenstein and stick a node up your nose and up your ass and all up your back and in your ears and shoot electrical volts through it anymore. They can deal with frequency through the television, through your radio. And when I was speaking about synthetic telepathy, through your bones. through your bones. Now, in the electronic dissolution of consciousness, there are some extraterrestrial interferences and, and, and incursion around that. Now, some people say, well, damn, here you go. <laughs> You're talking about little gray and green men running around, sticking us and prodding us here and there. <laughs> Let's get it straight. Your ancestors were dealing with other neighborhoods long before our experience with the Caucasoid. It's all over our writings. It's all over our experience. We are extremely matter-of-fact about this. 
We are only getting hyped and excited about this. Why? Because he's getting hyped and excited about it. He's only now coming into the realization that there's nobody. See, he's been going around the globe conquering and killing everybody thinking that he don't have no more strangers in here that he calls his neighborhood. So there ain't nothing else for him to fear. Fear of a black planet. But now he's beginning to see that there is a wider neighborhood and a vaster amount of neighbors, and that scares the shit out of him. So what does he do? He punks up and cuts a deal. This is how he has been able to make these leaps and bounds in technology. You got to remember that there is an entity which we're going to get more deeply into. There is what we call the fallen lords. At least I call them the fallen lords. You can call them the Elohim, you can call them the, the fallen angels, and all the different names that they have for them. These are the fallen lords of light. And they do not like, you are nothing more than vegetables to be grown and processed, much like you saw it here. They took a piece of that for this movie. But it's much deeper than that. It's much more significant than this movie. They tried to give you a little bit more science fiction than science fact, but there's more science fact if you know where to look for it. Now, frequency warfare, or the electronic dissolution of memory and consciousness, was developed by the CIA immediately after Kennedy was assassinated. It was a project to create electronically controlled robot killers that were programmed to kill on demand. E-D-O-M, E-D-O-M, or the Edomites. E-D-O-M means electronic distillation of memory. They change your memory around, who you are, and take away your identity so that the identity you have belongs to them, and you kill on demand based upon what they want you to do. Edom eliminates the memory of the individual or alters the memory of events that the individual was involved in. By electronically jamming the brain, the existing acetylcholine, and that's the part of the brain, that's the part of the essence that the brain secretes for your memory, the existing acetylcholine creates static which blocks both sight and sound. This method can be used to either block or erase the memory or to slow it down so that events seem to happen after they actually occurred. So you have a delay of focusing in and the chemistry that puts the picture of the experience into your memory bank is delayed. So in other words, you take a picture, they have made the solution, the picture is your experience. They've made a solution or they've done something so that the solution that keeps the, that, that develops the negative, so to speak, they've delayed it so that the negative now takes so long to become part of your memory that you recognize that it ain't be like a month or a year from now that you think it just happened yesterday. So they, they have the ability to slow down the ability for you to even make a memory or even recall a memory. This is how deep they've gotten. Excuse me? Well, yeah, it's more of a kind of a condensed form of time manipulation because it's not really time manipulation. It's time manipulation perception. Little difference, yeah. Now, biological radio effects, this is again part of the, um, the, the, the technological which is going to lead you into the biospiritual uh, form of mind control. The use of very low frequency and ultrasonic affecting both electrical behavior within the brain and actual brain tissue. They have technological devices that they now have circling the planet that can affect the electrical pulses in your brain as well as the tissue of the brain in such a way to force behavioral modification and changes. There is the capability now to bounce pulses of 7 to 12 hertz off the 8 hertz ionosphere. Now the ionospheric envelope that we are in, they can bounce these particular 7 to 12 hertz waves off of it. And within three pulses, entrain crazy and bizarre 
forms of energies into your brain, which in turn now enlists crazy and bizarre behavior. So they could seed war or peace. They could seed fights, riots, and so forth, based upon manipulation through very low frequency, or what is known as VLFs, and ultrasonic frequencies. All right? Now we're going to just speak about how they are going to get into dealing with mind control on a more subtle and a lot more insidious level. Because everybody's hip to what they're going to see. You're going to knock on your head and find a chip. It ain't going to be like that anymore. You're going to be the chip. You're going to be the one that, that is your own mind control based upon what they do to the biology in your body. Now listen very carefully. The blood is the river of life. It is also the river of light. Be very clear. It is not only the circulation of nutrients, but also the circulation of consciousness. Blood is the circulation of physiological consciousness, bio-spiritual consciousness. It is within the blood that you find all of the components necessary to coalesce, bring together, to bring you to higher levels of awareness. If your blood stinks, if it's filthy, if it is depraved, if it is full of garbage, you cannot, you cannot enlist or you cannot filter higher light waves through such a bloodstream and then have it convert to intelligence. It is impossible. If the blood is polluted, there is no way for you to convert higher fields of light codes into higher fields of light intelligence. It isn't going to work. Spirit feels its essence in matter. Spirit has no feelings. There is no feelings. Feelings puts matter in touch with spirit. So spirit needs matter to know what spirit is, to know what it is. So there ain't nobody floating around there and knowing everything and I know what you feel like trying to call on some ghost or some entity that never took on a physical form. Forget it. They don't give a shit about you. There is no empathy. They need to have physiological experience in order for them to set up an empathic bridge between the physical and the spiritual so that you can now, that's where your ancestors come in. That empathic bridge is based upon them having been in corporeal life. Once you're in corporeal life, the spirit has been changed. It has been, it has been um, quickened in such a way that it yearns to get back in there. That's where you put all kind of experiences on the soul, which is essentially the bridge between the spirit and the physical. So spirit feels its essence in matter. Matter, listen carefully, children. Matter is an envelope that seals the spirit at specific levels of awareness. Matter is an envelope that seals the spirit in to the flesh at specific levels of awareness. How light manipulates the envelope determines how the envelope is refined in order to expand it to allow the spirit to feel itself at higher and ever higher levels of awareness and consciousness. Check. Did you get what I just said? Follow me and stay with me, because it's going to get deeper. <clears throat> Once you get this perception in, your cells are now jumping around, saying, oh man, more. Feed, feed. Oh, this is like ice cream. Feed me. Because when you start getting into the knowledge or the meal that is the self, you become insatiable. And then all of this physical bullshit don't mean nothing, because you no longer have what? The appetite for it. Check. All right. How light manipulates the envelope, and I'm talking about sunlight, not this light. How light manipulates the envelope determines how the envelope is refined in order to expand that envelope to allow the spirit to feel itself. Remember I said his words, to feel itself at higher and ever higher levels of awareness and consciousness to control the evolutionary advancement of the flesh, the spiritual advancement of man as well, one must seal and maintain the present envelope at its present level of self-awareness. 
Now, did you follow me when I said that? Because here's what is necessary to keep you in check. I'm going to repeat it now. To control the evolutionary advancement, that is, the spiritual advancement and the spiritual awareness of man, one must seal hmm, and maintain the present envelope structure, which means the present perceptual matrix, the present, ah, that's a window, now, this is a mic, uh, this is a desk kind of scenario. But these are not what I just said. These are agreements based upon our agreement to perceive them as such. Remember I said that matter is a biphenomenal effect. And the only way matter becomes hard is through the agency of man's focus on that thing. Matter has two components. Matter has two personalities, a wave and a particle. But when man or when the human brain is not looking at the wave, at, at matter, at its highest level, it is a waveform. But when human mind, when human thought, when human perception focuses in on that wave, it becomes a particle. So it means that the human consciousness is necessary or is an integral part in how matter coalesces into what we call reality. Are you all with me now? Because I'm getting ready to take off and if you can't stand the heights, just lay down and go to sleep a little bit. And I'm saying these things because when you understand how deep this is, when you understand the level that the beast is playing on, you now are at the field. You cross from him, football, definitely, you know, one to one. And you the quarterback, you the front line, you the running back, you the pass receiver. You're everything. You're taking over the game now because you know how it's being played on you. So they must control the envelope at its present level of self-awareness. Now, how do they structure that awareness? Through your education system, through your television, through your entertainment, through church, definitely through church. It got you in light code lockdown, boy. They really got you believing that some white man came down, laid on a cross, and saved your asses. I was hearing them coming. Man, everywhere in Carolina I went, there was a church on every goddamn corner. On Sunday when I was down there on the lecture, they were driving me there. Wasn't not a near black man or woman on the street. Everybody was in church getting their dose. Everybody was plugging in consciousness intravenously to the words of the preacher man. Sucking it in, just like you saw in the Matrix. They had my boy plugged in everywhere, feeding on him, feeding on his light. Now, in order to maintain the envelope of your awareness, in order to make you believe that this is who you are and this is all you are going to be, they have to dysfunction the blood. They have to dysfunction the blood because it is the blood that is the crystal that takes the light and refracts it takes it and specializes it, much like a prism does. When you look at white light, you take a prism, and you put that prism, which is a crystal, up to that white light, boom, you get seven different colors. Or the perception of seven different wave bands. That's how consciousness works. It works to diffract what is inherent within the light into what you now see as those seven colors. Those seven colors become your awareness. Check? All right, now, stay with me. The light, your blood crystals refract the white light into what you see as consciousness. Now, a little preliminary information. The sun is your Pez dispenser. It dispenses the codes of consciousness in vectors of light. It is the sacrificial sun. What you see as the corona is the crown of thorns. You are essentially taking in light at specific frequencies and valences, refracting them through the temple, which is the crystallization of light. You are crystal light. And I don't mean that damn crystal stuff you just straight up there and drinking. I'm talking about you are 
crystallized light. And you are diffracting concentrated light into the reality based upon the structure and design of the temple of God. How your blood is constituted says what level of light you can process. Ooh, I see the lights are going on in some of the brothers and sisters. I better get to my blood. Well, that's why they want your blood. That's why you see all these vampire movies coming out. He needs your blood. He need to find out what's in your blood that's going to keep you around and him not. There you go. Oh, we're going to get to DNA. Oh, Miss DNA. Now, there are principles of energy. Listen carefully. Principles of energy, formed energy, powerful principles of energy. Principles of consciousness awareness that exist to create harmony for themselves through havoc to you. Check. It's the order of things. You can't blame them for it. Just like a leopard goes and hunts and kills the lamb. It's the order of things. You have higher evolutionary beings who you believe are supposed to be so sweet and loving and oh, because now I know light. Hey, these motherfuckers know how to get shit done now on a whole other level. They've learned to manipulate light. They've learned to condense it and change it and use it and take it and do what they want to do with it. But by that very act alone, they have created their own ceiling. Because once you start pimping off somebody, once you start using somebody, once you start working off of somebody like these preachers do, like religion does, like government does, once you start pimping people, you have to keep them at that level so that they can remain your food source. So you have higher levels, higher beings that are of the lower order that have to maintain that order through making you their vegetable garden. So your whole consciousness uh, envelope, your whole consciousness environment is being terraformed by these higher light beings who are actually on the lower strata once you get to know them. They look all fly. I mean, you know, they look bad. Somebody see a star walking down the street. You see Wesley Snipes. Go, Wesley. Go, Wesley. You say, oh, shit, Wesley Snipes, baby. Woo, what's happening? You all up in there, stars in your eyes and shit. That's the same way we would look at them. But they ain't no different than you. They just, they just got up to the tower by doing all kind of shit, making you believe that they're somehow different from you. But they have contained themselves by their actions. And they know that you have the ability to reach light speed. They know you can bypass this illusion that you are now functioning in. They know what your inheritance is, and they are about keeping you from getting it. Your havoc is their harmony. Check. All right. Listen carefully. Ignorance is a food source. Ignorance is a food source. Ignorance causes disturbances because of its random acts of chaos due to the lack of awareness of self. So by your very act, you create disturbances that would not have been there based on your ignorance. So by your acts of ignorance, the dynamics for their sustenance is made ready for them. And you are ignorant as hell. That's planned. Disturbances in the natural, ordered, and harmonic flow of light create peripheral or ambient frequencies from which these principles of consciousness, or these fallen lords, extract and receive their nourishment and sustenance. Let me say that again. Disturbances in the natural, ordered, and harmonic flow of light create peripheral or ambient frequencies from which these principles of consciousness extract or feed and re receive their nourishment and sustenance. They are evil only in the sense that they cause us evil by our participation with them. 
Now, the idea behind evil is a concept based on the acculturation of behavior. What is good, we say this is good because for the mass and for the whole, we benefit. If you do a specific action, if you are participating in certain things and it creates something that's bad, and then we say, okay, that's evil. It's a consensus. Because people who are evil, some of the nicest guys, some of the nicest people. Evil as hell. But when you get to know them, they're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Good, yeah. Evil, evil, evil. But then, if you're looking at that, and you see them channeling that energy, and you get all caught up in, oh, he's evil. Get thee behind me, Satan, and all pontification. <laughs> you don't understand how evil you're becoming by putting up all that bullshit, because you just now saying, I'm going to be the sword of justice for girl, for Jesus and all this shit. And you just become just as evil as the bastard. You fall in the mud with somebody and not get dirty your damn self. How the hell are these preachers telling me some shit about they're going to fight Satan? And they're going to fight Satan. And you, gonna, you got to be Satan. You got to know Satan. I want to know everybody that this white man don't want us to know. I want to know more and more about Lucifer. Not, not from what they're telling you. Because ignorance is a food source. Most people or most entities that you call evil are actually acting upon self-preservation and are based on survival imperatives that were cultivated some billions of eons ago. We get trapped by them through our lack of instinctive self-awareness that the mind and the spirit inherits through a continual refinement of the corporeal envelope. Let me then say that again so that you'd understand it. We get trapped by these entities who feed from our ignorance, who feed from us. Through our own lack of instinctive self-awareness, our own lack of instinctive self-awareness, that the mind and the spirit is supposed to inherit through a continual refinement of the corporeal envelope. So the more you live, the more you should know. The longer you live, the more you're supposed to know. You ain't supposed to be stupid at 50. And Lord knows that's when you get real dumb. You get real scared and stupid and go run in the church. You start running to look for Jesus after you get that first pain in your back. Oh, it's coming close to the end. Heart attack and motherfuckers just catch Jesus and say, Lord, yeah, he came to Jesus. Because that's the only out they're going to give you. Is to come to Jesus. We become trapped by the envelope through the chromosomes. Chromosomes. Which contain the DNA and the genes. Now here's where we're going to start getting heavy. <coughs> The chromosome is a DNA-containing linear body of the cell nuclei responsible for the determination and transmission of hereditary characteristics. Ah, see, that's the, that's the clinical definition. And that's what they want you to think that's all it is. Let me repeat that. The chromosome is a DNA-containing linear body. Linear means straight of the cell nuclei responsible for the determination and transmission of hereditary characteristics. Now the chromosome then must have all of the information of the ancestors locked into it. This is why this devil, this geneticist, who is the new Gnostic, huh? The geneticist is the new Gnostic. He now has the ability to get into the library of your experience and start picking out what he wants of the information and start playing inside of who you are. Not who you want to be or who, who you are so that he will make you who he wants you to be. Now let's drop about a gene. A gene is a functional hereditary unit. It is a functional hereditary unit that occupies a fixed location on the chromosome. It occupies, carefully listen now, a fixed location on the chromosome. It has a specific influence on phenotype or a group and is capable of mutation. 
Now you will understand why the gene can change and what that has to do with you and mind control. Now, listen very carefully. There is something around the sun called the chromosphere. The chromosphere. Now, the chromosphere of the sun is made up of primarily hydrogen. Check the connection now. It is several thousand miles in depth and lies separate and above the photosphere which it surrounds. Okay? The chromatosphere surrounds the photosphere and is distinct and separate from the corona or the crown of thorns. Listen carefully. The DNA I'm putting all the little uh, definitions in before we get to it. The DNA is a polymer or something of a high molecular weight. That's what a polymer means. Something that has a high density and molecular weight with millions of repeated linked units. The DNA is a polymer of the chromosome consisting of two long chains of alternating phosphate and dioxyribose units twisted into a double helix and joined by hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases, adenine and thymine or cytosine and guamine. Now let me go back to what I'm saying and how it connects with the chromosphere of the sun. Go back to the top. The chromosphere of the sun is made up of primarily hydrogen. This is why I, was, I needed the blackboard. The chromosphere is made up primarily of hydrogen. All right? It is several thousand miles thick and lies separate and above the photosphere. Photo meaning the light sphere, the part that you can see, which it surrounds. Now, the DNA has a alternating phosphate and deoxyribose units, linear, that is twisted into a double helix and joined together by hydrogen. I said that to say that the so-called chromatosphere or chromosphere of the sun and the chromosomes of the cell, are you checking me? The chromosome of the cells are your inner sun. Remember, the cells are your internal little suns. You have whole solar systems that are cells. The chromosome and the chromosphere are together and are synergistically linked through the activity of the DNA. So the sun and you are intermittently connected through the DNA. Your chromosomes and the chromosphere, hydrogen bonds in the, chromos in the chromosomes, hydrogen is, as, the, as the, the majority, thousands of miles thick around the sun, there is a connection. You are being beamed information through the hydrogen, uh, uh, the chromosphere of the sun is connecting to the hydrogen coupling bonds in your DNA and giving it instructions to change. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be giving you instructions to grow a third helix at this present time. But because you are in light code lockdown and because they are polluting the atmosphere so that they filter out the instructions from the chromosphere to your chromosomes, you're the one that's getting all, you know, you might as well be back knuckle dragging at an ape. You are being regressed purposefully to keep you as a food source for light. The DNA represents a fixed projection of light as consciousness. The DNA represents a fixed projection of light as consciousness. As light travels through the ever-increasing density of matter, it begins to spiral in relationship to the elements that it gathers. Let me say that again. As light travels through the ever-increasing density of matter, it begins to spiral. It doesn't go into a straight line. It spirals. That's why when you look at the electrical line inside of here, it's twisted. Because all things, once it gets to this level, light travels, everything travels, atomics, everything travels in spirals. All energy travels in spirals. 
So, what constitutes your DNA is the coagulation of these elementals, these primordial archetypal elementals that are now coalescing around the, de the design of the intelligent mind to become you, man. So the DNA is essentially just following the instructions of universal mind to condense you into man, to God as man. Now all of this is coming to be because now you're going to see what they have to do in order to interrupt and, 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 and mess with who you are. Because the old forms of mind control don't work too tough no more. Evidence. Y'all ain't sucking on a neck bone. <laughs> the denser the elements themselves fix light through the densification of atoms the elements fix light okay they fix light through the densification of atoms who behave according to how many elementals and atoms join together so the more compact, the more uh, uh, constricted these atoms and these elements work together, the more density of light you have. And the better aware, the more awareness you can actually encompass and the more manipulation of these atoms you can do through your mind. Because that's the secret. Manipulating the structure, manipulating the DNA helix, manipulating the hydrogen connection so that you now begin to give instructions based upon your awareness, not through what they're telling you. Higher awareness, it must grow now. You must get deep into metaphysics at this time to save your life. This is not just about you saying, well, I'll, I'll study in school and we'll take this, and I may even take a little something of metaphysics. No, bullshit. You gotta have to put everything aside and study metaphysics now, because that's how they're coming at you. They're coming at you through the metaphysical tip. The denser or more compact the atoms, the greater the concentration of light. If you manipulate the atmosphere or ionosphere, ion, ion is the name of John. That's why the book of John has nothing to do with no people. The book of John, if you notice, the four, four, the, four, well, the four gospels, the first three are called the synoptic gospels, which means they're just synapse, they're, they're just a compilation, real put together. Most of them are all put together. They're pretty much the same. But the last one of John don't seem to start off like anything else. All right? John is not actually a person. It was based upon ion, ionosphere, ion being a dynamic of radiation, a dynamic of light. So John, if you look at the word J, there was no J, it was I, I-O-N. John, is the book of John, is telling you in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And if you understood what the word was and how they're using the word to manipulate your DNA, the word through frequencies because remember the word is a frequency so they're playing with the word so that your words come out the way they want you to say it they come out the way you want they want you to think it the manipulation of the word through frequencies the word is a frequency when i'm talking to you i'm talking to you on a band based upon frequency transference from here to here to here to there it's about bouncing energies back and forth through sound frequencies. Well, they've learned to take the word and to use it for evil, to bypass your ability to filter the word into consciousness and put in this instructions to make you still think that you're an animal, to keep you on the lower, on the lower fields of awareness. If you manipulate the atmosphere or the ionosphere of our planet, you interface with the hydrogen source or higher nutritional base of light in the DNA. Hallelujah. I don't know where I was when I said that. <laughs> Let me repeat it. If you repeat, uh, whew, somebody bring me back down. I need to take a sip. Mm. Whew. You know, as I tell you, boy, you want a high? You really want a high? Get into metaphysics. Because once you start coming into self-realization, you start losing, I mean, things start moving and turning. And... Let me put that back to you again. If 
you manipulate the atmosphere or the ionosphere of our planet, you interfere with the hydrogen source or the higher nutritional base of light for the DNA. The hydrogen anchors, and I use that word anchors, between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix. Now, the word helix comes from the word helio, which means, hello. These things aren't named by accident. Now, the hydrogen anchor is between the complementary bases. Now, this is the DNA. Just imagine the DNA and, and, and these little ladder, Jacob's ladder, connecting it all the way through, okay? The hydrogen anchors, and I, I use the word hydrogen as an anchor because it anchors the elements that have coalesced into the helix. Hydrogen anchors those, uh, those, those, those elements, all right? Between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix. Now, helix is from the word helio, which is Greek for the sun. From one of the strands where it is bonded, in sequence becomes distorted and different in its ability to hold the light programming. Let me, re let me repeat that for you. Don't worry. We'll try our best to really simplify it for us to get it. The hydrogen anchors between the complementary bases that project towards the axis of the helix from one of the strands where it is bonded together in a sequence become distorted and deficient in its ability to hold the light programming. When they screw with the ionosphere, and that's what the heart technology is all about. When they screw with the, heart, the, the, the ionosphere, they mess up, they distort and they cause disturbances in how the light frequency, hydrogen frequencies come to this planet. And let me tell you something. Remember a long time ago I spoke about the fact that one of the great wars that took place on this planet caused the hydrogen canopy that was around our planet to fall, and it fell. Remember I spoke about that? And it fell 40 days and 40 nights. And what do you call that? Flood. Right. Well, the ionosphere collapsed. That particular hydrogen atmosphere that we had around our world collapsed. That atmosphere used to be in synchronicity with the sun's atmosphere. So we had an Edenic kind of energy here, giving us information that was piped along the line of star frequencies. Remember, the starlight you see are nothing but lattices or relay stations for light. And the more light is relayed, the more, um, the more differentiated it becomes, the more specialized it becomes. So the core of our universe, the core of our galaxy, gives off a specific consciousness intent. Follow me now. It gives off a specific consciousness intent of higher universal mind. That intent becomes synthesized as creation. That creation through suns, and I told you in the last time, a sun is the youngest form of life in the cosmos. And that sun, as it begins to peek through, it then becomes a relay station of consciousness throughout the whole galaxy. And it relays light from the core, what the Mayans called the Hunab Ku. The Hunab Ku holds the instructions for your consciousness time zone. So wherever your zip code, your consciousness zip code is, you have a specific consciousness revelation that you have to achieve. All of this is based upon a holographic dynamic, and you are in a gigantic holograph of the, of the universal mind. It is not one-dimensional, and I know you are trying to look at this thing as it is omnidimensional. This is how I'm trying to speak to you. So it, it, you, you, your eyes, like they said in the movie, why is my eyes hurting so much? You say you've never seen before. So why is my head hurting? Why is my back of my back? What is he talking about? I am taking you out of your linear, your, your, your blinders, and having you see three-dimensionally now who you are. You are not in a universe that when you look out in the sky, that's the direction. You are in an omniverse, and this is a holographic design of the mind, of the universal mind. And you are participating in a hologram. And where you are positioned on that hologram, you are picking up specific points of light and information beamed to you based upon your position in the hologram. The hologram is being changed right now. That's why there is no mothership coming. This is the ship that will be changed to a whole other environment where you will be picking up whole other forms of light, whole other lattices, whole other directionals coming at you all at once. <laughs> you 
Did y'all want me to stop for a minute and just uh, kind of digest? No, everything's cool, right? We can still go. Okay now, because, you know, I'm pacing. You know how you get one guy out there to pace and get, get them exhausted, and then you run him over, right? Okay. Now, when you distort the hydrogen essence of the suns and its ability to give you the helium, all the different forms of elements, because remember, all of the elements that's in your body, you don't need to be getting from food. The sun creates the elements based upon what you breathe. So it's necessary to pollute the atmosphere so that the solar radiation that creates the, the, the nutrients, the, 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 the um, what do you call it, the minerals, the sun creates minerals. So what the best way to do it though, to, for you to stop getting minerals through the breath, because the breath is the breath of life. You are the breath of life. You're not the spinach of life. You're not the Mickey D's of life. You are the breath of life. So the breath is supposed to give you everything that you need. But when you distort the atmosphere, when you distort the environment, you cannot be nurtured through your primary source anymore. And then this now distills the atmosphere into the blood. This is the secret of Jesus changing the water to wine at the marriage of Cana. If you look at the word Cana, it means place of the reeds. If you look inside your lungs, it's nothing but a constitution of, weed, of reeds. That's what your bronchioles are. The marriage of Cana is taking in the solar radiation as food, condensing it as the waters into the wine that is your blood. You see, oh, it gets deep. It's deep. I mean, after this, why would you even want to go to school? What are they teaching our children? What are they teaching us in these places? When you have done this, when you have distorted programming this will interfere or distort the DNA's ability to determine individual hereditary characteristics or be manipulated to create freaks of nature now it has been told that our planet is being terraformed by different types of species who live in these kinds of environments now these kind of environments never existed when we were around. We have adapted. We die sooner than, than the thousand to two thousand years that we lived. Why is that? Because the atmosphere has been terraformed in order to keep someone else comfortable, in order to feed someone else, in order to sustain someone else. There once was a hydrogen halo surrounding our Earth that fed the higher frequencies of universal mind directly to our DNA pattern. It was a triangular harmonic that connected the sun's hydrogen harmonic and the earth's hydrogen harmonic to that of the body's hydrogen harmonic. Today, the fallen elders, or as they're called, I call them, the, uh, the, uh, the elders, uh, the, the dark elders, and I don't mean the dark elders like us, I'm talking about those who live in the, in, in the shadows of your awareness, inhabit a great portion of humanity's evolutionary envelope. These entities have walked into you. They have taken you all over. There's some of them, you walk down the street, you can see them right away. They don't look like they're from here. They're walking around with a blank stare. They really look like they are not from this planet. You can pick them up. You know what the clones look like. We told you what they look like and, and what they're about. They have this glare, they have this blank stare. They, they, they deteriorate very quickly. But you remember that they inhabit, these entities inhabit a great portion of humanity's evolutionary envelope. Better yet, they occupy by intrusion based upon your ignorance of yourself. That's why people who have thoughts that are not their own, sometimes you wake up and say, damn, why did I think of that? Sometimes you wake up and you start saying, oh, wow, what would we look like if my baby was strangled? I want to say, oh. I know. Have you ever had one of them thoughts that came to you and wondered what you should... Whew, where did I get that thought of murdering and, and killing and somebody dead and mangled, somebody close and loving me? That's them trying to get in. That ain't you. And it's good that you could recognize it and not get caught up in it because there are some weak enough to get caught up in it. And they follow it and then they become part of it. That's why the, the, they, these entities took over Hollywood. Because they don't have a way to physicalize themselves. 
So they live as a component of your dreams. You get pictures of alien. And in that, they live because you give life through your thoughts. Your, all of the elements that go into creating a chemical memory gives you pictures, gives you sounds, gives you words, gives you experiences, and they live inside of that which you have provided them by the chemistry that is you. So they actually create, wait, you try to find out, where do they get these kind of monsters? Who is the one who's designing these? They are working through those entities that they know are part of Hollywood. And they're there to make sure that they have places to live because when you go look at the movie and you see this and you, you're getting terrified, they live best with children because children have a greater impact. They have a greater impact on the memory chemistry of children. That's why you got to be very careful about what you show your children at a very early age. Because they're like cameras that just snap and keep pictures. You know what it was like when you were scared and you saw a monster and you kept that bad boy with you for how long? They live in that. And I say, oh, I'll get out of here, Reverend Brown. Yeah. Well, yeah, tell me, you know, when you're running from something, you don't know what it is. <laughs> like a crop of vegetables, and you can see Matrix with this one, humanity today is cultured like a clam to produce a pearl of energy that is of great value to the fallen elders. Every time you are educated, they have put a sand or stuck a grain of sand somewhere inside of your consciousness. And then it irritates you. And then all of a sudden you make a life for yourself based upon the pearl that your body creates to defend yourself from that sand called education and you've created a pearl based on your irritation the fact you got to pay your taxes your damn rent is due you get in a fight with your husband he leaves you now welfare gets paid and now it's all one dynamic and they keep putting that sand in keep putting that sand in every time you wake up the sand begins with that in jack vaccination from the vaccination they give you the bottle and from the bottle they put you into these nurseries from the nursery they put you in there terraforming you like a crop of vegetables humanity today is cultured like the clam or like the oyster to produce a pearl of energy that is of great value to the fallen elders light is the pearl Today, a vast segment of humanity is waking up out of the sleep. Here's where the problem lies. A vast amount of us are waking up. We don't want to go along with the bullshit anymore. We don't want to listen to all the crap that they're talking about. It don't even seem real anymore. We laugh at it. We talk at the television. I know I do. I hope you all do. I hope you all get up and when you're looking at the news and you hear some bullshit that you start saying back, get the fuck out of here. And you look for something and you throw it at the screen, that's healthy. You start yelling and screaming and getting mad. They can't get in there. That's healthy. It's unhealthy when you're sitting there, mm-hmm. Look at that. That's, that's the sign of insanity. If you can look at the news and just be quiet and just imbibe that kind of crap. If you can look at television, if you can look at the, at the television, I mean the movies, when I go to movies, I start talking all kind of shit. Get, what the, you look at that shit. Do you see that? And everybody's right there, what's he talking about? Just shut up, you know. I want to see him shoot him up, you know. The fact that you all are awakening is perilous to the fallen elders. In that you are now weeds growing in their gardens. And a weed grows, boy. Weed is strong as a motherfucker. You cannot, it don't be cultivated. Weed, you can't, shit. You try to cultivate all these things that you do in the vegetable. It looks so nice, it looks so pretty. Weed say, damn that, I'm growing right here. And you gotta, oh man, and you gotta kill it, the shit grows back. Quick! Well, you are the weed in their little garden of ignorance. Now, catch up with me. A cosmo psycho bio spiritual order. Let me say that again. 
a cosmo psycho bio spiritual order that was established eons ago is dismantling because the old restraints of brutality and fear no longer work on you as in the case of early Christianity a newer more insidious method of control must now be instituted an internal control dynamic an internal brutality and fear dynamic that can be controlled by the push of a button now the button can be a word the button can be the change in a temperature around you the button can be something that you see flash before you. The button can also be pushed on a console. Those who do the work for the fallen lords constitute the conscious and the willing, A, and the unconscious and obedient, B. Let me say that again. Those who work for the fallen lords constitute two kinds, the conscious and the willing, A, and the unconscious and the obedient, B. Those we focus on today inhabit and operate through the priesthood, listen up, those we focus on here today inhabit and operate through the priesthood of the temple of medical science, the new Gnostics. The geneticist is the new Gnostic. The Elohim of the Bible were geneticists. Gene Genesis, G-E-N-E-S-I-S, -E -E Genesis 1, that's chapter 1, verse 26 says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. We don't know what the fuck they look like. Do they? Do you know what the, the Elohim look like? No. You don't. Now, here's something deep. Why is the gene so important to the Elohim of today, the new Gnostics? Well, let's look at this. Well, let's look at the word lamp. Lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Let's look at the word lamp. All right? Could you please read the word lamp there and what that means? All of the definitions out loud. A device that generates light, heat, or burn through a wick for illumination. A star, planet meteor or other celestial body something that illumines the mind or soul leave lamp that's it that's it wait a minute hold on lamp star lamp how you get how you get star how you get lamp illumination he ain't talked about them did you yeah well you put a match to it got a little flame the wick is your what? Brain. Ah, a part of your brain. The pineal. The lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. When it gets lit up, all illusion disappears. When your pineal is at full-fledged flight, when the lamp of God is, is lit up through the kundalini rising, hmm? All illusion disappears. You look into the glass darkly. There is no more fucking with your mind. You have the capabilities to raise that lamp, to light it. Now they say here that the lamp is a celestial body, a meteor, a star, a planet. Well, the word lamp means a device that generates did he not say generates therapeutic radiation? Where did that come from? A lamp. In the West Indies, my grandmother went over, lifted the bad boy. That's a lamp. You go over in the corner, you flick your switch. That's a lamp. 
No, it's not. We're looking at the words that you're dealing with. Remember, in the beginning was the word. So the beginning of your illusion is based upon the construct of language and how language is used or misused or how you are ignorant to how a language is used or how in your awakening you can use language to unlock the doors that keep you in light code lockdown. A star, planet, or meteor. Something that illuminates the mind or the soul. This is a lamp. A lamp. Well, let's look at the lamp a little further and check out the story about a lamp. What was the most famous story about a lamp? Aladdin. Aladdin. Mm. All right, so something told me. Who is Aladdin? How you spell Aladdin? A, A, L, L, A, freeze it. Oh, hold on. Hold on, yeah, okay. Allah, Deen. Okay, the word Deen, if you break down the word Din, not Jin, Jin, we know what the Jin is, but the word Din means dissonant sound. Okay? We know Allah. All right? But din is a dissonant sound. Now, if Allah is God, this person in the body of Allah din obviously has to be an aspect of God who speaks dissonant notes, who speaks or misinterprets the word. So what does he do in order to find himself, to get his wish? He rubs. Oh, okay. Come on back up here, brother. Need you one more again. So I said, well, let's look at the word rub. Okay. What we got there? Okay. Yeah, I see. see the word rub. Start from there, but uh, just keep on reading. Rub now. Wait a minute, hold up. What do we do? What does rub mean? <laughs> Friction. Friction. Rub a little with the... Yeah, this, this is rub, right? That's what you think rub means. Go ahead. To subject to the action of something that moves back and forth with friction and pressure. To cause to move along a surface with friction and pressure. To irritate, annoy. His laziness was being to rub me. To move along a surface with friction and pressure. To shape, to shape with friction to cause irritation or annoyance. Keep going. Informal. To continue in a given situation, usually with some difficulty. Hold that. Say that again. To, to con continue in a given situation, usually with some difficulty. Go ahead. To admit rubbing, a blackboard that rubs clean easily. To be transferred by contact or proximity. Hold on. To be transferred by contact or proximity. Go ahead. Wish some of her luck with rub off. Wish some of her luck with rub off on me. Okay. Um, to harp on an unpleasant matter. Go ahead. To uh, to obliterate by or as if by rubbing, slang to kill, murder, rub up. To refresh one's knowledge of. Wait. Repeat that. To refresh one's knowledge of. Second one. Improve or increase the keenness application of friction and pressure. A moment to, to no. hop on. No, go ahead. To go obliterate. On. Okay, go, keep going. To obliterate by or as if by rubbing. All right. To kill. Right. Murder. Right. To refresh one's knowledge of. Okay, hold on. To refresh one's knowledge of. All right. The next one after that line was? To improve or increase the keenness of a mental faculty. Hold that right there. Thank you very much, brother. To improve the keenness of mental faculty? Let's go back. Remember we said Aladdin, Allah, dissonant note coming from the word of God. He now has the lamp, 
of God. He rubs it. What does he do then? He increases what? His keenness? Mental faculties? But remember now, this is a lamp he's rubbing. And we know what lamp is now. The lamp is the sun. The lamp is the star. What is he rubbing? Okay. Now he says the word rub is to continue his given situation, sometimes with great difficulty, to refresh one's knowledge, to improve or increase the keenness of mental faculty. What comes out after that? Spell? What? A genie? Oh, wait a minute now. Okay, so now the genie comes out of the lamp, which is the star, and grants him three wishes. Now, I know you're saying, well, where the fuck is he going with all of this? You think about how language has within it coded information. Now, who knew what rub meant except to rub? You know, your backside or your face or your hair or rub a little baby's bottom with some, some, uh, some cornstarch or something. Who the hell thought it meant, you know, getting into your consciousness, acuity, and what? Rub? To exercise the keenness of mental faculty? I want to rub my brain. I want to rub myself with some words. The genie comes out, which is the gene, which is the code for the body. So Allah, din, or the dissonant code, rubs the lamp, which is the light, which is the sun, which is the internal dynamic of light, and then comes out with what? The genie. And the genie gives you three wishes. You, it is said in, what do you call it, in, um, in Sanskrit, that you live, you come back seven times, three Three cycles of seven times to grant your wish in the flesh. Because all of what you do is based upon hmm, what you do in the flesh. Spirit don't do shit. The spirit is just here to accumulate information. The spirit is part of the component that was developed. It was the light that Lucifer took into the darkness. It was, the, it was the Prometheus fire that was unaware, though self-aware. You see? And all of it is hidden. The geneticists are now in possession of the lamp. Or at least have knowledge of how the lamp works. To release the gene, to get the gene E to do its wishes. The lamp or star within us is in the cell nucleus, which contains the chromosomes or light bearers, the light fixtures, the Lucifer matrix within you. Lucifer is the lamp. Lucifer is the wick and it is the flame. The morning star. The light bringer. The thing that illuminates the mind and the soul. The gene, listen carefully now, the gene occupies the fixed location on the chromosome and has a specific influence. The geneticist occupies a fixed position. Hear me now. The geneticist occupies a fixed position in the hierarchy of the fallen lords and is now in charge of creating and producing specific influences in today's humanity. Let me go back and get that to you one more time. The gene, as it was said before, Hmm? occupies a fixed location on the chromosome and has a specific influence. The geneticist or the new gnostic occupies a fixed position in the hierarchy of the fallen elders and is now in charge of creating and producing specific influences in today's humanity. Based on the condition of our planet, it would appear that nothing or no one can be saved. And this is what they are telling you, that without them, you cannot be saved without the operation, without gene therapy, without the drugs, without all of this that they're doing. They're terraforming your bloodstream. 
They're damming it up just like they would dam any flowing river so that they could change the dynamic flow of the river and get your hydroelectricity from it. Well, what they're doing is they're damming your bloodstream with all kind of shit. And from that particular dam, they're extracting all kinds of perverted forms of electrical impulses that come out as your behavior. The old order of disease and health, food and nutrition, mind and matter, God and man are either dead or dying. The present human experiment as a species is a dismal failure, according to them. This is what they're telling you. Ye cannot be saved unless ye be born again. And ye are only born again in Jesus Christ. You cannot be protected from all of these germs out here unless you're vaccinated. I'm giving you all of the spiel. You cannot get anywhere in life without an education. Do you hear how they are playing with you and in your head? In reality, man is breaking free. The containment unit or cell or gene is in the process of spiritual mutation, hallelujah, which in turn signals biomolecular freedom from the illusion of the present corporeal agreement. To the fallen elders, this constitutes death in this plane. They cannot allow it. It means that in their garden, the crop of vegetables is turning into an uncontrollable weed. The fallen laws through the Illuminati geneticists say we need a new man. We need a whole new breed of man. Give me a zoom on this. New movie came out. Thank you for uh, giving this to me, uh, Sister Puma. Let me just get this on there first, and then I'm going to show it to everybody else. New movie has come out. They got a black man playing Adam and a white woman playing Eve. We need to create a new man. Now, they know that the new man can't come from them. It won't come from them. It can't come from them. And this has nothing to do with racism because I'm getting this information from them. They cannot procreate beyond 2012 at the level, at the velocity, and at the tenacity that the black male and the black female can. Well, they've already started recruiting the black female. Oprah Winfrey is telling you that. Whoopi Goldberg should tell you that. Claire Huxtable should tell you that. And all these other and Jemima Negroes. <laughs> the name of the movie is The Loss of Sexual Innocence. Wait now, sexual innocence is usually denoted to the female. The innocence now, or the remember now, the loss of sexual innocence is that the white woman, obviously, has been living in this paradigm where she has been put on this pedestal where, you know, she is the, you know, quintessential angel of womanhood. This is what she has been given. And, um, she is innocent of any kind of uh, thinking of, you know, having some big black buck just jumping all over her. <laughs> so how do you lose the innocence? You put it up on screen, watching the backside of this big black buck just thrusting away. We're going to lose this innocence. <gasps> My heart! What a crock. And this is what they're spoon feeding to us because now they have to terraform your awareness. They have to make you believe it's all right. We need 
new man and a new womb man. The building blocks of life, the genes, shall be rearranged in such a way to create a new man for a new age who will function in the right way. The geneticist says, finally, with gene engineering, all possibilities are open for us. We have ways to escape our own physiological lockdown in this paradigm. All we have to do is genetically alter the fact that we don't have the ability to make the melanin. We don't have the ability to protect ourselves from the higher frequencies of light that are going to inevitably be coming to this planet. And it isn't just higher heat, it's higher information. That's why they're going to start getting melanoma. Because the melanoma is burning up the bullshit. It's cleaning house. It's cleaning genetic house. Hmm? Hmm. So now they have to change the infrastructure. They have to start milking and blending and putting together certain blood types that come from the between. See, my blood type, they're going to want to find out what's wrong with me and how I get, okay, I got part white, part black, part Spanish, part African, part everything. They're going to want to know what my blood is doing. How come he ain't got pustules coming out of his skin? Well, you can bet they already are terraforming the human body and they are using the body itself and how it defends itself or how it acclimates to higher frequencies of consciousness. They're already doing that. They're already growing them in pig, in pig wombs and in sheep wombs. Now, what is the work of the geneticist? He has transferred human growth hormones to pigs to make them grow faster. He has terraformed the pig because, and this came out of his literature, the skin of the pig is more closely related to the Caucasian skin. That is why he uses that particular animal to test all of his sunblock. The sunblock is tested on the skin of the pig before he puts it out on the market for sale. He now found, and this is deep because they told it, right? You got to look at all them off channels. Don't look at this bullshit two, four, five. Look at the off channels because they slip it in there. This is a medical channel. On a medical channel, they said, well, we found that the pig has always been more closely related to man. Which man? <laughs> Who in fuck are you talking about? You know you're not talking about me. That's bullshit. The pig skin? It's him. Now they have terraformed the pig's whole anatomy, changed the bloodstream, dammed it up with all of their little chemicals, put the human gene into the pig gene, grafted it, did it in such a way that now the pig has created internal organs furred to human bodies. You can now go down to transplant agencies and put in an order for a pig to grow your blood type, to grow your organs just in case you have a heart attack. Never mind teaching you how not to get a heart attack. We will build a whole industry waiting for you to get your inevitable heart attack. They have all kinds of pigs. They got cows. They got sheep that are growing human shit. They got one with a human head. They say, oh, get the fuck out of here, Reverend Valentine. Bullshit. They got something, a sheep with a human head. Damn right. They're growing human bodies inside of sheep ovaries. <coughs> Ooh, Yaku is going, he's out of control. <laughs> Yaku is out of control. And these are Christians. Nine times out of ten, most of these damn geneticists are Christians. Eh, they're Christians. A rose by any other name. Now, check this. The process.
process of cross-genetic interspecies breeding, when introduced into humans, not from human to the other species, but from the other species into the human, will create a disease called acromegaly. Now, acromegaly is the disease that Akhenaten had. Now, acromegaly changed him into a hermaphrodite. Now you say, well, damn, one of our greatest kings who believed in one God, they had to kill that motherfucker. You kidding? You come in there with one God perception? All the rest of the gods said, you're out your mind. There's no such thing as one God. There is no such thing as a God. God is a creation of man. And until we understand that, you are God. That the only realization that you have that there is a God is because you have to be God to realize that. The only reason you have the realization to realize that there is a God is because you are God. You could not be unless God gave you the realization to be and that you realize that you are. You are God. I'm speaking to God. God speaking to itself. God has conversations with itself. And this is what it's all about. You ain't waiting for somebody to come down and talk about Jesus spoke to me to do anything. Anytime you think God is speaking to itself. You're waiting for some outside source. And that's the deep part of Christianity. You're in a Christian state. Check this out. You can go talking to God all the hell you want. They tell you, speak to God, talk to God. But as soon as somebody tells you that God spoke to them, they think you're crazy. <laughs> they want to lock your ass up in a Christian institution because God spoke to your ass. Well, what the hell? You've been talking so long, why wouldn't you be getting an answer? Why should it be so strange if there is a God and somebody's saying I'm getting answers, somebody's talking to me, God is telling me to do it. Why shouldn't I believe you if God is out there to be spoken to? You doing all this damn praying. The work of the geneticist, the new Gnostic, the process of cross-pollination causes all forms of deformity. And how does this happen? How does deformity become creative? I'll okay, tell you, putting insects into human, insect genes into humans, putting all kind of animal things and cross-pollinating, doing all kind of crazy things out of your mind, disturbing the order, only because you know that the present order cannot keep those who are us getting ready to leave, getting ready to get on the good freedom ship to get the fuck out of here. They know they got to stop that journey. The exodus is now. It's getting ready to happen. The so-called Moses that is the light that is you, your realization, self-realization that you call your Moses energy leading you out of the land of bondage, the bondage of this three-dimensional consciousness time zone, you about to lead your damn self out. They got to stop that journey. How, does you have to, how do you stop this particular journey? Because all journeys of consciousness begin where? Within. So you can't be putting all kind of tubes and stuff on the outside because inside is going to always bypass that bullshit. As a matter of fact, the physical body was meant to solve problems, meant to overcome adversities. So you could put all kind of chips, you could put a plug right up his asshole and you, he's going to find a way to bypass that. So you got to get him at the essential level where spirit, where light synthesizes and condenses and liquefies into the bloodstream. The direct connect, you got to get him there. The gene can be taught to synergize with the pig. Now let me tell you, a gene can be taught to synergize with the pig. And when eaten by man over a period of time, along with vaccinations, of course, you got to get 54 of them, remember. Now, why would you need to get 54 goddamn vaccinations? Unless it's to terraform you and to make you more susceptible 
to the species change that they got planned for you. The pig gene will teach the human body after it's been introduced enough times to interface with it. You see some motherfucker walking around with a big snout <laughs> and a cloven hoof. <laughs> An extreme danger to the genetic integrity of the human is when genes are deliberately implanted into the genome of a tomato, for instance, which don't become inactive in the tomato. Check it. The genes that are implanted into the tomato don't become inactive by the fact that the tomato becomes a tomato. In other words, it doesn't become part of the tomato construct. It's active. But are aimed in your tomato, these new genes that they're putting in, is aimed at the human brain. It is possible now to introduce what are known as buddy genes or soul mates, and that's S-O-L-E, that's for the sole purpose of mates, or what is called accompanying genes that become active only when you take it into a human construct. In other words, it's inactive while it's in the tomato, but when it comes into interfacing with your chemistry, it comes to life. It is possible now to introduce these buddy genes. The only problem for the geneticist would be to keep this buddy gene inactive in the food until it is taken in by the organism. This brain gene has no purpose or function in the tomato whatsoever. It is inserted specifically so that whoever eats this tomato absorbs and then activates this brain gene. The gene is then received by receptors in the brain that correspond to the artificial brain gene and is then synthesized with the DNA of the person. Now they say, well, that's impossible. How the hell does that happen? It does not happen just by a whim. Your body has to be slowly degenerated in order to accommodate this kind of change. A body that's in pristine health will not accommodate it because it will recognize the intrusion and then all forms Complete. It's like, what? What you doing here? Out. That's it. They ain't coming up in here. We got everybody's sane here. Everybody know who they are here. We know we don't know you. <laughs> but if you have a retarded bloodstream, based upon all the filth that the cow pus and the monkey pus and all the crap that you eat, the sugar, the salts, not the real sugars, not the real salts, I'm talking all the crap you breathe, everything that begins to degenerate the river of life and, and slowly dim the river of light. Hmm? Now, under stealth, hmm, special forces, hmm, special forces, which essentially are what? Huh? Special forces are essentially the geneticists and their particular agents and their particular kind of, uh, what do you call, ordinances. Hmm? We'll go in under cover of ignorance and under cover of a polluted blood. Yes, own you, brother put it succinctly. Own you. The gene is then received by receptors in the brain that cause brain gene and is then synthesized with the DNA of that person. The destination of such brain genes is first and foremost the original parts of the brain. That means your so-called reptilian part, the part that is first grown in the womb, the part that, that, that helps to, to, to be the, 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 the stem from which the flower, the lotus, blooms. Understand what I just said? The stem from which the lotus blooms. The lotus don't bloom if the stem is cut or if the stem has some form of impediment in it. And you could put certain types of artificial receptors there that take the natural flow of light and energy and completely changes them around so the lotus blooms out as a cactus or some shit. Now, the destination of these so-called, and I'm using this word brain genes, is first of all the original parts of the brain 
understand that original part of the brain is the limbic system. And the limbic system is a group of brain structured uh, uh, nodules that include the hippocampus, the amygdala, the dentate gyrus, the dentate gyrus, the, sing the cingulate gyrus, the gyrus fornicatus. Fornic yeah. The gyrus fornicatus, the arch cortis, cortex, and their interconnections and connections with the hippocampus, the septal area, and the medical area of the mesa south, uh, the, uh, okay, hold on for me, the, these motherfuckers put all this long shit here, Mesen, mesencephalic, and phallic being, you know what, right? Mesencephalic tegmentum. Must be something look like a dick sticking up in your brain somewhere. <laughs> this system is activated by motivated behavior and arousal, and it influences the endocrine, the endocrine system, and the autonomic motor system. That the endocrine system is what helps you make sure that you are either male or female. It, te it tells you how to distribute all the nutrients. It tells you where to put everything, how your body is supposed to function. The endocrine system is like the baddest part of the system. It makes all of the hormones and makes sure the hormones are healthy. Fuck with that. And, you know, guys are walking around and women are walking around. And you don't know what's what. Yes, brother. You had, you know, okay. So the genes implanted in the tomato don't cause the tomato to grow or even live longer, only to manipulate man. It is the ultimate medium for control of humanity through the manipulation of food. Remember I mentioned earlier that food and eating of food is a form of communication. Eating is a form of communication. Eating is a form of information transfer. Because everything that you eat is based upon your synergistic communication with nature and nature communicating her love and her beneficence to you. So when you eat, you can't be talking all kind of bullshit. You can't be arguing with somebody. You can't be yelling and screaming. You could be in a nice temper there. You could be doing, but you could be eating. I have a problem eating sometimes looking at TV. But then when I'm eating, I'm getting pissed off. You know? So, unless you are completely girded against the bullshit, you know, don't eat and, and absorb shit when you're eating. You're supposed to be eating around something real calm. <clears throat> you're supposed to be listening to breezes blow, you know? You're supposed to be hearing the breath in your head. You're supposed to be hearing the chewing. You're supposed to be feeling and synergizing with the food. Oh, thank you, broccoli, you know. You know, thank you. And, oh, this is so good. Oh, yeah. And eating with the fingers like children. You know, just getting messy with it, you know. Just loving your food. One to one. We're the only society that, that eats with inorganic meat is supposed to steal between you and your food. At least the Chinese and them put this, the wood, and the wooden bowls, wooden spoons, at least have some kind of frequency vibration with the food. The wood is alive. That's cool. But the hand. The hand pre-digests the food. The hand, the energy in the hand and the fingers communicates to the body. The, the aura is already picking up what you got in your hand. Before it even hits your mouth, you got the right digestive juices in the mouth. Why do you think babies look so happy when they have food all over them? <laughs> the whole body is enjoying this. It's sucking it up in the pores and everything. Eating is information transfer because the nutrient base that's within that life form that you are sacrificing, that you are giving up, that is giving up its life for you, that information is being transferred. The information of the light of the sun, photosynthesis, what the earth has been telling, information from a plant that picks up information. Plants talk to one another from around the world. They don't just speak to one another. You, you read the secret life of plants. They speak. They had this dude, he was, he, he was standing there, and he, he hooked up an oscillator or some kind of uh, equipment to a, to a cantaloupe, and he was about to smash this other cantaloupe, and the cantaloupe energy started going off the scale, as if it was alive, like it knew what you were going to do to the other cantaloupe. So everything 
that is a byproduct of life is alive. So when you are eating live food, you're supposed to be in thanks, you're supposed to be in great humor, in surrender and in love and in... Th I mean, that's the way. You cannot, you cannot be poisoned with that kind of attitude. You cannot, I don't give a damn if you're putting down hemlock. You have this love. It knows you. Food knows you by the way you are with it. It knows you from the beginning. Now, let me describe what a gene is. A gene, to me, metaphysically, is a resonance or frequency receptor. Listen to me carefully. Now, I hope I'm not losing you. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure you're all right? You can just, you know, like do this. You know, I won't be embarrassed. You know, yawn and stretch it out and, you know, do a dance step. Wiggle a little bit, get the blood flowing. Because remember now, while you're sitting here in front of me, all the blood that you would normally be using to digest food is coming up to the brain to digest my words. You see, all the blood is up here now. That's why some of y'all are saying, well, damn, it's too much blood. Huh? <laughs> because you get an overload. Yes, brother. Oh yeah, not only the Department of Energy is hooked up with the Pentagon. Okay? You said uh, the Human Genome Project. There's a Human Genome Project that is um, funded by the government. Matter of fact, it's, it's made up of scientists from around the world. And um, it's funded through the Department of Energy, which is funded directly through the Pentagon, which is funded actually directly through the Jason. Uh, organization, which is the, the, the super scientists. All this bullshit you see with, you know, taking water and turning it to steam, that ain't nothing. That, there are levels of, of science that they practice. This is practiced at the highest level. What? Oh, yeah. You yeah, have to turn them into the battery. Yeah. Well, that's what the whole movie is about. You got it right there. Yeah. IBM. Uh, AT&T, GE, um, all, yeah, all blue chippers. Mm hmm Yeah, all of them. Mm hmm Yeah, okay. Oh, shoot. Big boss spoke. <laughs> now, the gene is a resonance or frequency receptor. The gene is a translator of light and sound frequencies into information. Hello. Let me say that one more time. The gene is a translator of light and sound frequencies into information or atom. Informing atom. Informing. The informing of the sun. The sun informing. When you get information, you are forming light within you. That's what information is. Whatever you get in a sound, you process. And that process becomes you. That's what information is. The, the, the instructions form you. They, you form yourself from what you are given of the word. This is communicated to the cellular complex at large. Thought frequencies are reflected frequencies. Now follow me. Thought frequencies are reflected frequencies. They reflect or are filtered through the soul and the signatures of experience that have marked it. Your soul is marked with tattoos, blemishes of past experiences. They vibrate. They help to in uh, inspire you. They give you the premise of your thinking. All your former experiences are tattooed upon the soul. They give off frequencies that create your kinds of thinking, your kinds of behavior. They give off frequencies that eventually, if you keep constantly dealing with them, create your disease states. Thought is the bedrock of all disease. Thought terraforms you through the way the soul has that signature. In your, all your experiences, Okay? And that graffiti now, if you constantly keep reading the graffiti, the graffiti becomes more and more a part of you. So the thoughts that you think, all thoughts that you think, inform you. And by that informing, creates what you are, who you are, what you become. Thought frequencies are reflected 
They reflect or are filtered through the soul and chis of experiences that have marked the soul. In man, the gene transcends or transduces. The gene transduces. To transduce means to, to, to reduce, to, as it's flowing, the brother's electric, electricity. To transduce means to attenuate or to downgrade in energy. So the gene transduces higher light frequencies into perception, awareness, and intelligence. That's how the body is formed. The body is a byproduct of divine intelligence. The byproduct, the byproduct of divine self-awareness that is the creator. The divine, the divine, um, the divine byproduct of self-perception that is the creator's involutionary realization of itself. So, in man, the gene transduces all these light frequencies into physiological perception, physiological awareness, and physiological intelligence. It keeps the I, me, and the I am in touch with its individual capabilities to achieve the principles of the higher mind. Let me repeat that. In man, the gene transduces light frequencies into perception, awareness, and intelligence. It keeps the I, me, and the I am, okay? The I am and the I, me. I, me is the offshoot of the I am because the I am already is in knowledge and in of itself. It is. It is itself. That which I, me is, is based upon the fact that the I am is looking at itself and sees I, me. Hey! Whoa! That's me! That's me! That's me! And when you do that, whole other kind of energies open up for you when you can see who you are in everything and everyone around you. That's the warrior. That's the true warrior. That's the true exercise of God's higher plan. To become. To become in knowledge of self. The I am that I am becomes the I am that will be. And the I am that is of knowledge of itself. Or in the knowledge of itself. Now. A gene can change its capacitance for higher information. Or change it to a lower capacitance through the type of information that the collective organism receives, translates, and communicates to every part of the physical body. Let me say that again. A gene can change its capacitance for higher information through the type of information that the collective organiza organism receives. So information comes from the environment, the sun, the breeze, the water you drink, the words spoken into your ears. All of these things are telling the gene who you are in relationship. Because all things, the only knowledge can come of self through relationships, through dynamics of three-dimensional interfacing. This, that, height, depth, width, breadth. This type of genetic change is based on involutionary evolutionary experiential reality dynamics that is based on individual assessments of that said reality. But today, genetic change or modification is neither involutionary or evolutionary, but coercive, invasive, and aggressive. Unnatural. Genes are now being manipulated to serve a temporary agenda with devastating consequences to humanity in the long run. Each part of the brain mentioned earlier are compartments that diffuse light into consciousness or awareness fractals that are then reassembled into the focus that represents intelligence, awareness, and consciousness. Let me say that again. Each part of your brain are compartments that diffuse the light that you're picking up and break them down into the fragment. Now remember, this is done in breaths of seconds and, and, and nanos and what do you call it? This, don't even think, I'm slowing this down so we can actually pick up on what I'm saying. But just imagine how light is compartmentalized and then boom, focused, just like that. 
Just imagine what basketball, just, just for playing basketball. You know how many things are going on at that time? Just before you, boom. That's information. All of that being the speed of thought. That's light. That's mind. So each part of the brain mentioned earlier processes light into awareness fractals. That's a, I, I put it that way because that's the best way I could actually say it. Awareness fractals that are then reassembled into the focus that represents intelligence, awareness, and consciousness. The concept of mind is a nebulous thing until it is given a focus. To speak of mind control is to speak of changing the lens by which the mind is focused. The light transduces or is transduced as through the chromosomes, the light fuses or focuses through the genes. Now let me say that again. The light transduces, the transducers of the light, and I said transducers mean that which focuses all of it. That's what brings all of these fractals together, are the chromosomes. The light, chromosome, the light fractals that you get as universal intelligence is compartmentalized and given their instructions through the chromosomes. The light focuses, as I spoke to it, are in the genes. Did you get that? Okay, so one gathers the light, the other focuses it. So the chromosomes gathers the light, it's a light transducer, the genes focuses the light, like the lens. Okay? Stay with me. By nature, man is a light gatherer, a light bearer. We are here to accumulate light in greater and ever, degrader, ever greater degrees, through adversity, through insight, through love. We enhance and expand the corporeal vessel and its envelope of light, thus raising our frequency, potential, input and output, acquiring the ability to penetrate deeper and ever deeper levels of omniscient minds. But the geneticists of the fallen lords know that your feelings and your desires constitutes the focusing of light. Listen carefully. Here's where we get into what it's all about. The geneticists know, and they will never tell you over the six o'clock news, the geneticists know that, and this is the fallen lords giving them their instructions, your feelings and your desires constitutes the focusing of light. Okay? The feelings are the gatherings of light. That's why some women are the vessels for that. Desire is the focusing of it. See how you operate? The woman is the gatherer. She's the one by her own nature. Once she is impregnated, it is she who gathers the specific materials that bring together the human in her. Okay. Feeling is essentially a feminine situation. It is the deepest part of the female nature. Feeling is the magnetic. It is the gatherer. That's why when women are angry or emotional, they're feeling, they're not thinking. It's not their energy. They are gathering all of what experiences they have in their bloodstream. Everything, the mind, everything is just being gathered to that point of feeling. Okay? So, the feeling gathers through the chromosomes. Desire focuses through the genes. Okay? You, the mother, gathers all the materials to make me sentient. The desire or the intent was the sperm that enacted or initiated the process within her. So once that happens, the two dynamics are coming together. Feeling and desire are working to create this corporeal envelope for sensibility so that God could sense itself on the lower levels of creation. Okay? Now, feeling accumulates light in accordance with its intensity, its field of awareness and potential. Desire focuses that light. Okay? You see, the very vessel of the female, the 
vaginal orbit is an in, internal energy. She absorbs, she takes in. Her whole thing is feeling the atmosphere. She don't got to know that the wind is blowing. She don't got to know she's coming. She don't got to know. She can feel that. That's her domain. That's the energy she deals with. Desire, which focuses all of what she feels, gives direction to it. That's why the male principle gives direction to the female, whether she likes it or not. That's right. She, if she doesn't get the direction from one male or situation structured by a male, she gets it from someplace else. She thinks she's getting it by herself, but society was structured based on a masculine intent. The intent is followed through based upon how she participates in it. But it doesn't work the other way around. No. In this society, the feelings that particular aspect of reality is decried. It's not even put into the equation. So she feels completely outcast. So she does not feel that her place, when, I mean, well, shit, when you completely take away the feminine principle of God, what have you taken except the feeling? So how are you going to talk to God and God ain't got no fucking feelings for you any damn way? There ain't no feminine principle in God. Not unless you draw Jesus as a faggot, and that's what they do. They put a dress on him. They got him. They got to put the female principle back in there. They done snatched it out. Christianity just killed off everything feminine. That's why they got so many faggots in the, in the, uh, in the, in the church. Why do you think they did it the little boys? The Pope was a pedophile. Oh, I need to do something on specifically Christianity, the dirt of Christianity. I did something on breaking down that whole trip on Christianity around the Bible. But I ain't never dug up the, the bones, the dead, the, this, the carcass, the, the festering flesh of Christianity. And I got all that shit just laying in the pocket for one day. Maybe we can do that one day. Let's say, just say digging up the corpse of Christianity. Yeah, 10? All right, let me get past this so I can get all this information down real close because I want to drop this on you. It gets deep. The geneticists pretend to make you nice, ripe tomatoes, right? But what they are doing is tilling the soil of your cellular landscape to plant seeds of a crop that will be of benefit to the fallen lords. He is a scientist of the highest order, a Jasonite. He is an Argonaut in pursuit of the golden fleece. The fleece was a goat skin. Remember? Anybody saw Jason and the Argonauts? Okay. Let me just show you something. Where that at? You drop something on your ear. You saw it? All right. Uh, ah, here it is. Okay, let me get to that point right there for you. He is a scientist, and he's an Argonaut in search of the golden fleece. The fleece was a goat skin. This is why they introduced cloning to the world by way of the lamb, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. The world is a new genetically altered man. The savior of humanity is the lamb. You remember? Right, they played that game on you real heavy. The lamb did come back to save God, to save humanity, but to save humanity how? And for whom? All right, pay attention. The geneticists tell you that certain characteristics of man have caused the deplorable state of mankind so that everything coming out of the world of feelings must now be blocked if things are going to get better for humanity. This was the violence initiative that they were starting to put out. They were drawing thousands of vials of, of black young male's blood and putting it away. The emotional impulsive kind of man is no longer acceptable for the earth. Only people with neutral feelings, or better yet, no feelings at all, are acceptable. Feelings automatically give fuel to desire, which focuses the intent of the feeling. 
the, inf the introduction of specific foreign brain genes into the food to communicate a genetic key that will lock down feelings is the grand purpose of the fallen elders. Let me repeat that. The introduction of specific types of brain altering foods, brain altering genes into the food to communicate, to communicate a genetic key that will lock down feelings. This is the grand purpose. They have already introduced and produced genes that leave the person without feelings. We already have those. They introduced them in the Vietnam War. They did so by identifying. Now, how did they do it? They identified 3,000 human brain genes. 3,000. Now, if the alkaline structure of these genes have been deciphered and decoded, it is only a matter of routine for them to deal with their DNA uh, machines to produce these genes, and they've been doing them by the billions. This has the capability of introducing what are called X genes or xenogenes into the limbic system. Genes that will produce or will produce the desired effect of blocking or shutting down the light or shutting down the feelings or impulsive behavior. Impulse. Anything that has a pulse is alive. Understand what I'm saying to you? I am a pulse. I am pulse. Impulse. Another possibility is the creation of soldier types. And they did so already. If you can eliminate empathy, sympathy, and mercy, and instead activate rage, murderous desires to attack, you have created the quintessential killing machine. So, what is so troubling about feelings for the fallen elders and the Illuminati? Well, feelings and their focus through desire are the prerequisite energy dynamic for understanding the biospiritual empathy. Now understand, biospiritual empathy is necessary for you to be able to decode the higher light frequencies. Empathy sets up an, a, a magnetic pulse that draws synergizes energy and light to you. Empathy, empathy, remember empathy. It is the conduit for the energy that helps the fragmented perception of man understand his connection to unity. This cohesive element that helps you to understand unity is what is now defined as love. Without that empathic feeling. Without the ability to understand feelings, you cannot understand love. You cannot even process that energy. You can't even synthesize or decode what is love. Because remember, it is man who gives love to God. God don't give love to man. It is man who keeps, who civilizes, man who creates peace and war, not God. This empathic resonance called love helps us to recognize or recognize or re-see our separateness and the illusion that maintains this. It is in our separateness that the fallen lords maintain their power and control over us. Love for one another and self-recognition is only possible through sensing ourselves. This means the communication between the soul and the rational mind is possible only through the realm of feelings. Let me repeat that. The communication between the soul and the rational mind is possible only through the realm of feelings. When the world of feelings is blocked, this causes an atrophy or a deterioration in the neuronal or nerve conduit creating heartlessness. You are no longer feeling remorse. The feeling that a mother would have for a child to nurse a child, that is being genetically bred out of us. The longing to be interfaced with a higher divine mind, that will be taken out from you. The burden of the soul is increased. Now what do I mean by the burden of the soul? Each time you have an experience that you have a problem getting rid of, the soul carries that signature as a burden. People dying from quote-unquote cancer and different diseases are dying from the burden of a perception of experience that they've had. The judgment they've made of themselves in that experience. You carry your own judgment. You sentence yourself. And your disease is your sentence. The sentence is marked on the soul based upon your judgment of the experience you've had. That's why they say, judge not lest ye be judged. Because in your judgment, you set up the signature dynamics. And the more you judge, the more you judge yourself in relationship to other people and other situations, you further dig that signature in your soul. 
until such time as even if you die with it, the soul goes on with that signature and you take on another body and all of a sudden you get cancer. You didn't die from cancer before, but you die from cancer now. That is the soul cleansing self. If they change the genetic structure, if they completely change the neighborhood through which the body, through which the soul uses the body to unburden itself, the soul cannot unburden itself. Why? This gets deep. I told you, mind control is not what it used to be. The burden of the soul is also recorded in the physical genetic makeup. There is a resonance between the gene of the body and the information of the soul. There is a resonance. The affinity of the, of the soul is, is, is caught up in between. It, 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 that, that place, that resonating factor you have there, where the nerves end, the soul begins. That's why when they use the electron microscope on the on nerves, they don't know where it goes. It just keeps going and diffracting and, and just gets smaller and smaller. That's where the soul begins, right where the nervous system ends. So any experience you have, anything that you perceive as ugly, as evil, or as hurting, or as pain, is registered on your soul as a blemish, as a signature. Clearing the signature or the graffiti of experience always begins with the soul. In this process, the soul radiates the signature of past experiences in such a way that a certain burden becomes active in the genes. The genes construct the signature as a disease. Oh. <laughs> Taking a break. You have to, because I'm getting ready to take off. But check what I just said to you. This is deep. Let me say it again. The soul radiates the signature of past experiences in such a way that a certain burden becomes active in the gene. So the signature, the, the graffiti, uses the genes as an outlet for the burden that it was carrying. All right. Now. The soul radiates the signature of past experience in such a way that the burden becomes active in the gene. The genes now hmm, construct the signature as a disease. As a matter of fact, it creates the temple in the womb according to the previous signature. That's why you say, well, how the hell is Jerry Lewis going to stop this disease? He ain't! Because the signature is still there. The contract is still signed. So the genes construct the signature as a disease or a desire to fulfill a particular aim that was left unfinished in a previous life. Therefore, any foreign gene that is implanted and becomes superimposed or a part of the body resonance acts as a jamming device. Yep. Hello, you're getting it. You put those artificial genes into that body, it acts as a jamming device between the body and the soul. That's right. It is not identical with the true genetic structure that organically created the physical makeup in accordance with the past experience that molded it. It is different and does not correspond to the burden of the soul. The soul cannot bypass the jamming frequency or the program that it has constructed. And the xenogene, because of the signature frequency in the xenogene, the xenogene frequency creates a dis... Now this brother knows what I'm talking about. Puts you and the soul out of phase. Distortion. The soul resonates based upon the experiences. If you put a foreign gene, like a pig, who don't know anything but mud, all beep beep signals going off in your brain. You don't know what the fuck is going on in your head. You get migraines. You want to jump out a window. You don't know what the hell is going on. But your soul is out of phase with the genetics necessary for it to unburden itself. So you bug the fuck out. I'm just last page for, for part one. The result is a jumble of distorted light frequencies. For a clearer example. My own path of error is recorded on the soul and in the genes. Starting from the soul, I can organically clear up my past mistakes through my present learning experience in this flesh temple. However, the path of error 
which is foreign to me, that is, the foreign programming that was implanted into the DNA is not a part of my soul's experience. Therefore, the soul cannot activate the steps to clear itself of the burden of errors. The consequence is that the soul cannot work over and clean up or, or, or clean up or clean out the foreign programming until it has burdened itself anew through the Zeno programming. In other words, it has to take the new programming into itself and accept something it didn't do. Being the ram, he was the so-called chosen son. He's the new goat. He's getting ready. He came in. He brought the Capri. When you see Capri, that's Capricorn, all right? The Capri is the car that was basically dealing to that, to that specific side. Then you're dealing with the Cirrus. Every time they came out with a new car, it was to commemorate some particular ritual that they did to one of our gods. All right? So the Yuhuru Mazda with the Mazda truck actually, and this movie Star Wars being the savior scenario, um, the queen was the queen over the Nebu which is essentially your people, the Nibiru, actually. All right? He's playing a whole lot of games. All of it has to do with the scenario of a savior coming for you. Uh, Neo was sleeping in the first scene. Computer says, Neo, the Matrix has you. Okay? Then he pushes X. Remember, watch all the time because the matrix is a feminine principle, every time they upload the computer and they push, they push X. Watch every time, especially when he goes inside the ship and he gets located and, and they start programming him. Every time they push, it's X, X, X. Okay. Female, female energy, the whole thing around the message. Follow the white rabbit. That is procreation. The New Dawning, that was the Queen. The Queen Elizabeth wrote Alice in Wonderland. Uh, queen Victoria, I believe. Well, Queen Elizabeth when she was a child. That story was about what was going on in Buckingham Palace. If you read Alice in Wonderland, you will know all of the people that were playing in there were people who lived in Buckingham Palace. She wrote that particular story about the people around her and what they were doing around the world. Remember, the Jews and the British are hooked up together. British is B'nai Brit. B'nai Brit. A Brit. British and an Englander are two different things. A person who is British is not English. A Brit is one who deals with the covenant. Okay? Just bring you up to that. Hollywood says, or... Remember the time when he came in and he introduced you to who he was going to be? Remember when he was at the door and he had some sort of pirate program? What did the boy at the door say to him when he gave him the program? Hallelujah. You are my savior. My own personal Jesus Christ. Now, I'm just saying these little things to you because you thought he was just saying that, oh, man, get off today, bro. You're my Jesus. You're my Savior. You're thinking that you're saying this off to the deep end. Watch all the dialogue that's going on in the movies because they're setting you up to let you know that somehow the Savior scenario is going to work through something or someone that they're preparing for you. Nine times out of ten, he's already here. And he's supposed to be King Andrew or King, what's his name? What's the name of that little prince? Charles, King William, Prince William. Okay, now they already say in England, through Buckingham, that Jesus Christ's direct lineage is the, is the king. That the, that the royalty of England is supposedly descended from Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> they also say that Diana was assassinated or killed on a specific time, she was sacrificed at a place where the kings used to meet to fight, right there in France, to take over the whole shebang. Instead of getting everybody into the fight, the two kings would fight to see who would be king. She was assassinated right there. Now, she was assassinated carrying Jody's baby. Jody's baby. Now, 
the idea is that you imagine this little half this little half uh, black child with this woman who was supposed to be up to the heir of throne hooking up with the Arabs royalty in the royalty of, uh, of the Saudi Arabian Empire royalty there uh, connected to the king and queen of England Trinity, which is one of the other people's names, says it's the question that drives us. It is the question that drives us. She tells uh, Neo, it is the question that drives us. It's the question that brought you here. Remember I spoke about the fact that anything can be answered if you form the impeccable question. The impeccable question draws to you all the components for an impeccable answer. All of the universe is an answer. You you, as physicality, are the proverbial question. You were created to form the question so that God may question itself. If you grow in ever higher degrees, if you redeem yourself from the illusion, certain questions automatically come into your mind. You ask specific questions, you create the vortex in your mind, that particular vortex draws to you the light that comprises the answer. So you can answer any questions. You don't need no damn books. All you have to do is to accumulate enough personal power, accumulate enough light, ask the impeccable question, and the universe answers you. 918 is when he awakens up. <laughs> 99. Nine and nine, that's 18, that's the number of the beast, you have to remember. 18 breaks down to 666, and all the numbers are serious. And the number nine is 333. Three, three. The number 18 is 666. Now I'm putting all these things to you. What was his name? What was Neil's first name? What was Neil's real name? Anderson. Yes, his name was Thomas A. Anderson. All right? Now, it's funny because if you know your Kemetic language or your Kemetic U language, T-A-A -A means life force. And that was his, his initials, Thomas A. Anderson. It means force. Now, let us read what Thomas means in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Thomas, it means joined co-joined, doubled, twin. One of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. This disciple was called Didymus. Thomas is the disciple of Jesus the Christ who represents the understanding faculty in man. Understanding and will function or should function in unison. Each has the center of activity in the front brain, the forehead. Among the disciples of Jesus, Thomas stood for the head, representing reason and intellectual perception. Jesus did not ignore Thomas's demand for physical evidence of his identity, but respected it. He convinced Thomas by corporeal evidence that there had been a body resurrection and that it had not been a ghost body that was seen, but the, but the same body that had been crucified, as was evidenced by the wounds that Thomas saw and felt. In John 14 and 5, Thomas represents reason functioning in the realm of sense, seeking to discern the things of spirit through other signs. What was he doing all through the movie? Okay, we'll get into that. <laughs> Neo is Thomas Anderson, the doubting Thomas. Neo contacted, Neo was captured, Neo was interpreted. He says two lines. Thomas means twin, co-joined, Didymus, right? Neo means one, eon, new millennium, the new one. Two lives, two millenniums. Neo is implanted, thinks it's a dream. Morpheus states that he spent his entire life looking for Neo, or the new way. Adam, they told him to meet him at Adam Street Bridge. Take your notes to the movies. Now the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying to you about Neo, because we're getting thick, I'm just laying out the groundwork right now. Remember when he was being interrogated by the, the searchers or the seekers or the agents, right? What do they always have? Sunglasses? 
and an earpiece. They were searches, right? Now spell the word search and take out the first, the second three letters and you see what I'm talking about. They always connected it. They always told you. They're always telling you exactly what it is that you're dealing with. Sound. Wait, wait. Don't try to figure anything out yet. I'm just giving you pieces to the puzzle. Now, Neo knows the road end, where the end road ends. She said, you don't want to go out there because you already know where that goes. All right? Trinity tells Neo to be honest, that Morpheus knows more than he could ever imagine. Morpheus actually is Lucifer. <laughs> Morpheus is Lucifer. Okay? Or Prometheus. Neo is Adam. Trinity is Eve, because she introduces Neo to Morph. Just like Eve introduced Adam to the apple, is essentially the gift of Lucifer. She presumably has already taken the apple, because she said that she was already brought over. So he introduced Adam to Satan. And essentially, take this or this, the blue or the red. And he took the red apple, bit into it, and immediately his consciousness was changed. Okay? It came, his eyes came open for the first time. Right. How is it? He would have been, he would have done that and this so-called white woman would have fell in love with him. I have no clue. Do you think they were going to portray white and black integration? Well, you obviously have not come, you came in at the second part. We already showed that. Yeah, yeah there's a new movie called The um, the, uh, the Death of Innocence or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to go to that point. Let me just get to this point. Morpheus is Lucifer. He is the one awakening the Adam seed. Remember, the Adamic seed is caught in perfection. Adam, Neo, is caught in the perfection of his own dull surroundings. He is perfect where he is. He's miserable but perfect. He has perfected his existence no matter how imperfect it is. Eve and Adam were in perfection. Perfection is death. After perfection, there is nothing. So Adam had to leave perfection. He had to leave the perfection that is tantamount to his death. He was asleep in perfection to who he really was. That's why he had to leave the Garden of Illusion, which was the Garden of Eden. That's why he was taken out of the state of mind that he was in, which was perfection. Morpheus plays Lucifer. Neo is Adam. Trinity is Eve. Morpheus says, asks Neo, do you believe in fate? And Neo says, no, because I don't like the idea that I am not in control of my life. That is exactly what was happening with Adam in, in the garden. He had no control over perfection. He just was perfection. It's dull as shit walking around perfect. You ain't got nothing to do. So essentially now they're telling you that the world was really imperfect and that the true world was actually this thing that he shows them later on. Now, Morpheus, Lucifer, tells Neo, Adam, I know exactly what you mean. Because remember, he had a conversation with Adam and said, hey, and he told Eve, bite this. Come on, you'll have knowledge of the tree, of knowledge of good and evil. Remember, Morpheus or Neo was living in a world where he did not know the difference between good and evil. He had no clue or assumption of what he was living in. The state he was in was pure ignorance. He was just existing according to what he was perceiving. And that perception was his perfection. That perception was all he had as his reality. Lucifer came and woke him up. Just like Lucifer came into the garden and woke Adam up to who he really was. Gave him his understanding so that you see towards the end of chapter 1 that God said he has become like one of us. So all of them in that Nebuchadnezzar, the whole ship, constituted the Elohim to him. In other words, 
I didn't like the way God or perfection dictated his perfection and thereby dictated to me as well. Perfection dictated to you. You had no say. Morpheus tells Neil that he has been chosen because he knows something. What he knows he can't explain, but he feels it. Something is wrong with the world. Remember? Morpheus says, it is this feeling that brought you to me. The splinter that's in your brain, that's irking you. Morpheus asks him to, do you know what I mean when he says, when I, when I say the matrix? Do you understand what the matrix is? Morpheus says, do you want to know what it is? He says, the matrix is everything. It is everywhere. It is all around you. It is your work. It is in your church. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Hello? Now, the computer man telling you what the new epoch is going to be dealing with. Now, he's called all the people who are essentially the Elohim. They're saying that shit while Each it's on screen. Each one of you these playing people a second in the shirt party with the Elohim. Not realizing more representative that you are of the one Elohim because you the saw their name. Even Morpheus, the movie. Epoch, Tank, what that movie was meant to do Trinity. Was to <laughs> now, here's something that you need to deal with. First thing after he took the pill, what did he look at? The mirror. The mirror. What were we saying to you immediately? What would happen? What happened to God as soon as it realized itself? Remember what I said, I am and I me? Okay, now, my boy was living in the I am because he didn't know shit from Shinola. As soon as he took the pill, the first place he looked was into the mirror and saw I me. And he said, whoa, goddamn. And he said, he reached out to touch himself. He said, that's really me? And all of a sudden, it liquefied. And you saw, essentially, what the Bible was speaking about on the waters, the void. Where my Bible spoke to you about God looking upon the face of the waters. I mean, the, the dealing, it said here, and the earth was without form in the world, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the God moved upon the face of the waters. He touched it. And his whole face, everything began moving. I mean, they played the whole creation scenario right in front of your face. Genesis was being played out. He looked into the mirror. He is then awakened into the primordial ooze, which takes him over. He now takes on the specific matter that creates the physical flesh. Because you remember, he was taken over. The whole thing started taking his whole body over. Spirit began taking form. The whole thing is again, you've got to watch this movie the way it is. He is disconnected from his, 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 his precise perception and thrust, or his perceived perception of self, and thrust into the world or reborn into the real world of self-realization. In other words, he went through, ye shall be born again, that whole shit that the Christians do, except they don't take the pill, they just dunk your head in some water. <laughs> At that point, Morpheus was John the Baptist. Because what did he do with Jesus or the Redeemer? He came in there and he said, he, uh huh, threw his ass in the water and said, yeah, you seem to be the one. And he was not baptized by John. That's the misnomer. You remember, they'd be playing with the words. Jesus was baptized of John, not by John. In other words, the Jesus seed was baptized by John or Ion. Remember I told you there was no J. It's Ion. In other words, that Jesus seed I was talking to you about in your body, which is secreted every 29 and a half days of the month, every 29 and a half days of the month, that then secretes and travels down the body, down to the lower regions, descends into hell, and is resurrected. He stays three days on top of the kidneys and the adrenals. If you don't have sex those three days, that saving seed comes up and travels through the pneumogastric nerves and then gets travels up by the medulla oblongata, is crucified or crucified, resurrected, and sits at the right hand of the Father, which is the cerebrum. All that shit happens inside of your body every time you take a breath. So the whole story of Jesus Christ is essentially a, a specific type of function
that takes place in the body. If you deal with raising the seed 12 months without sex, and you raise the seed 12 months and then park that over into 12 years, 12 times 12, that's the 144,000 that becomes saved. That 144,000 now is raised to sit at the hand of the Father, goes there and comes into heaven, is redeemed the whole nine yards. All the bullshit they tell you about in the, in the Bible has nothing to do with somebody coming down in a ship or all the crap. It has to do with your body saving itself. You are the Redeemer and you have the essence of the Redeemer within you. Well, they know a lot more than we think they know. Remember this beast studies. <laughs> now, when Neo awakens, he asks Morph, what happened to me? Where is this place? Morph says, not where is important, more important is when. So we're dealing with past, present, and future. We're dealing with time. Right. Immediately, you saw the duality. Exactly, and space and time functions within a dynamic of units. Now, in other words, Adam has become one of us as a god who ate of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. He, Neo, is now in the realm of time. Before, he was, what's happened to me? What's going on? Now it's, when's going on? When's happening to me? When? Now he's now fallen back into the units of time. All of this is building. Morpheus takes Neo through the ship. He has the Nebuchadnezzar. All right? In Star Wars, the queen was the monarch of the Nibiru. Hollywood is resurrecting the story of the gods of Babylon because the Nibiru Anunnaki are returning. Epoch, Switch, Cypher, Dozer, Zosa is one of the names of the big brother who got killed. Zosa. Right? Then there's Mousy. Neo is plugged into a world that is accessed through the medulla oblongata. Now, remember when they shoved this in the back of his neck and said, this is going to feel a little funny. And they shoved it into the back of his neck. What was so important about the medulla oblongata? Does anybody tell me? Mm -mm. The medulla oblongata sits atop the tree of life, which is your spine. Actually, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because that's duality. Remember, when he was looking in the mirror, was good, evil. He was looking at himself. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The medulla oblongata is the place of the crucifixion. Now, there is a process in your body. When you raise kundalini, the secretion that you raise, which is the saving seed, travels along the spine. There is a channel on the spine that has spinal fluid. That spinal fluid, when it is processed, is a channel on the spine that has spinal fluid. That spinal fluid, when it is processed of higher quality atoms and, and, and nutrition, becomes the River Jordan. Now, if you understand the word or, G-O-R-D-A-N, you understand that ore is a precious substance. Okay? That precious substance goes up to the, 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 the spinal column, which is the River Jordan, and empties into the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is the pneumo plexus that is right here around your what? What's this? Solar plexus. This is the sun plexus where Bethlehem, this is where the Son of God is born. Here. In this center right here, your solar plexus, the pneumogastric the uh, ganglia. When you raise this seed up, and the seed becomes qualified, it becomes crucified or crucified at the mount of the skull, which is Golgotha. Golgotha means place of the skull, just like Calvary means place of the skull. The crossing of the two thieves where you see Jesus was crucified between two thieves the two thieves represent the two nerves of the sympathetic nervous system the Ida and the Pingala so when you see these two thieves talking to Jesus those are the ones that would steal your energy the seed back steal the light of the seed back and throw it back down and turn it into a pillar of salt where did you hear that story from 
Lot. Where do you think Lot came from? Lotus. The top of the brain is called, that part that opens up after the Kundalini raises, is called the lotus petals. The thousand petal lotus, that's your brain. That's the part that opens up when the Kundalini rises and opens up the lamp of God, or lights the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. If you are dealing with sexuality, like you want to look back and deal with Gomorrah and Sodom and all that shit, that's, you're dealing with that. If you look back or you change the energy going back downward, then it changes back to the essential minerals that it was constituted of and you give life on the planet Earth rather than the life up here in heaven. So Lot's wife looked back, essentially the energy, the, 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 the material that was being brought up the spine, looked back in sexuality and turned back to the essential components. So Lot's wife is the lotus stem. Follow me and keep up with me. Neo is plugged into the medulla oblongata. This is where the Ida and the Pingala crosses at the base of the skull, at the mount of skull. The material, which is like unrefined oil, goes up and is crossified by electromagnetic energies from the Ida and the Pingala. At that point, crucifixion doesn't mean to kill, it means to increase. So at this point, at this point, when that seed reaches that cross at the base of the skull, the specific material that was being brought up by Kundalini is refined at that area and increased. In other words, from crude oil to gasoline. Now it goes straight to the particular part where it begins to trill and activate the pituitary and then after that, the pineal gland. Now, when that particular thing was stuck in his medulla oblongata, immediately a whole nother world opened up. It opened up to any potential he wanted. Remember what he said, Neo awakens or is the one, the eye awareness is increased. Remember, his awareness of self increased as soon as he stuck that thing into his medulla oblongata. Morpheus says he is experiencing a residual self image. The residual self image is essentially of his past lives, of all the things that he was, is, and will be or any potential that he can be. A mental projection of his digital self. Morpheus asks, what is real? Remember he asked me, he says, is this all real? Morpheus says, well, what is real? How do you define real? If you are talking about what you can touch, what you can smell or you can taste, then real is just simply electrical signals that you can interpret with your brain. Now let's freeze that right there. Essentially, that's what the overlords, that's what the fallen lords have done to you. They have created a world of sensuality so that you now think that reality is based upon the sense messengers that send specific types of chemicals to your brain. So reality is being constantly turned over in your brain based upon the food they feed you and the specific appetites they create, which creates the sensations that give you your reality. The movies you go and look at, and the feelings you get from looking at the screen, create certain energy dynamics inside of your brain, and inside of your head, so that you now have a composite reality that you're functioning under. Check? Neural interactive stimulation is the matrix. Living in a dream world. Neural interactive stimulation. <clears throat> that is exactly what they are doing to you. Neural interactive stimulation. Every time you participate in education, every time you participate in sports, every time you participate in the food, the way you eat, in any kind of recreation, the music you listen to, they are playing with the neurons in your body. They are playing with the nervous system to create appetites, to create sensual ceilings. Let me get that to you one more time. They create a sensual ceiling whereby your senses now act as the shutdown mechanism to see beyond where you are. Your senses are taught to block any higher energies from coming through or your ability to access higher energies. Because when you deal with the senses, you deal with lower components. Morpheus said, man became like unto his creator, created artificial intelligence that spawned an entire race of artificial beings, a singular consciousness. Now, 
What were we talking about in part one? Except the fact that they are beginning to spawn a whole other race of man. This is what we're talking about when they're dealing with the kind of mind control that we're dealing with today. The kind of mind control that we're speaking about in this little folio. Now you all may think this is just a little bit, a little something that I put together here, but I made sure that everything I put in here puts little components enough for you to go and find the rest of the information. Get Matrix 2. And no brothers out there, if you can get uh, um, get the Matrix series from the brothers that are behind there uh, dealing with that, get the Matrix series. But get Matrix 2. 1 and 2 will put you into the groove. It will acclimate you to the kind of things that I'm speaking about. But the artificial intelligence dependent upon solar light to survive. Now check that out. Remember that the artificial intelligence was dealing with solar light. Now, what did they do? They went about and blackened the whole sky. Morpheus said that we destroyed ourselves to spite our face, destroyed the whole planet in order that they may not live. Now, what is this white man doing? Again, you got to remember that the white man's burden is to make sure that he does not become destroyed by the rest of the planet taking him out of existence. Not just by war, but I'm talking about genetic warfare. Fucking him completely out of existence. He knows it. He knows that we can fuck him out of existence. He knows that the black balls hold his termination. Alright? Now, that particular thing processes over to his behavioral dynamic. The very fact that he creates these kinds of weapons. He ain't got nobody else to fight. He owns money's mother. So it ain't about the money. Everything that is promoting his behavioral dynamic, everything that is causing him to be who he is, is to survive. He cannot interface and love you because he would disappear if that happened. He is a creature unto himself, and in order to maintain that, he creates technology to keep the distance between the humanity that could destroy him. Humanity cannot become part of his reality. That is why in part one I spoke about the fact that they are going to genetically engineer feeling out of the next humanity, or at least the humanity that is going to be the one he wants to interface with. He has to destroy feelings because feelings automatically gravitate you to one another. And he knows that it's a matter of time because he can't outproduce and reproduce you. So he has to restructure a barrier. His technology is his way of keeping the distance between you and himself. That is the illusion. That is the matrix between human dynamics. That is the artificial technology that takes the place of the original technology. You see, because we understood the original technology. When he went over there to these different places, saw all these temples of what he called it, wondered how they worked, couldn't understand why they worked the way they did. He did not understand the dynamics of African melanated technology. It had nothing to do with destroying the planet. It had to do with interfacing with the planet. That takes an enormous amount more intelligence than the kind of technology he is doing. All of this technology is, is obsolete. He is on this particular mad quest called progress. Progress is insanity. Progress is a psychosis. Process, progress is a neurosis. It is a necessity because that's how he has to keep up with keeping you down. The artificial intelligence was, dependent, intelligence was dependent on solar light to survive. Humanity blackened the sky to destroy them, but these things survived. Morpheus says that throughout the 20th century, man has been dependent on machines. And he said the funny thing and the most ironic thing now is that the tables have turned because the machines are now dependent on man. They grow man like a crop. Frankenstein got out the lair, got out the lab to terrorize its creator, just as God terrorizes man. Why did I say that? 
God terrorizes man, its creator. Think what I just said. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. Because you didn't get that. I didn't, think, I didn't think you got that. All right. Frankenstein got out the lab. All right? And destroyed, to terrorize and destroy its own creator. Just as God now got out the lab of man's mind to terrorize him. Right? Now, how did the artificial intelligence survive? The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 2,000 BTUs, that's British thermal units of body heat. Combined with a form of fusion, these machines found all the energy they could ever need generated by the cellular sons of man. Ooh, what did I just say? I just said something in that last sentence that just went right over your head. The sons of man. Oh, holy hallelujah. Woo! Come on and tell me, Jesus. I just gave you a clue. The sons of man. The sons of man are the cells. Now, check this out. They now found out that that one unit called the cell is so intricate and dynamic that it has thousands of layers that they have not yet understood in one single cell. They said it is a construct that cannot be fragmented and broken down and understood. This is the single cell. The cell is a sun in miniature, just like there are life forms on what you call your sun right now. The life form called the cell has thousands of intricate other life forms that constitute its own construction. So the sons of man are your cells because the cells are what need to be reprogrammed through the chromosomes, through the genes, in order for you to escape the present envelope of perception that you're in. You are trapped in this seal. You are sealed shut inside of this. And it is the cells that awaken and change the valence, change the frequency dynamic, change the oscillation, change the dynamic so that you don't even know what you're going to look like in the new paradigm. Because even if you could project yourself there, which you can't because you're living under a light code lockdown anyway, you can't know what this is going to look like because the next paradigm, you can't take this beat up piece of shit there. You got to rethink the vehicle. You got to get out of that 1929 bug and get into a 1999,000, you know, Rolls Royce or some other shit like that. You got to go from running around in a go kart and get into a rocket. Now you know you can't get to the velocity in in a push cart because this is what you're walking around in right now—a beat up push cart. The body that you have, the cellular agreement, the agreement to have fingers, the agreement to have eyes. The agreement to have teeth. All of these are agreements that have you functioning in the area of the agreement. This is where the contract is for. This is the three-dimensional third density contract area. This is where your body signed in to function. So it needed these things. You don't need it where you're going. Because the cells have a whole other arrangement for the kind of consciousness that you must have in your body at the time when you're functioning on other dimensions. You can't take this vessel there. You got to completely break it down and reassemble it to a whole other agreement. <laughs> now, will you notice how they're playing your head because it's really happening? When they were feeding the children, what did they feed the children? What was the liquid made of? Other humans. Right, it was liquefied humans. And what was terrorizing Morpheus was the efficiency with which they did it. Nothing was wasted. Nothing was wasted. 
The efficiency with which they're keeping you locked down right now is so... I mean, if you could look above all this shit and see how we're scurrying around in a maze like rats. Going to work, that's what I'm saying. Sister, I said that the last time. 66 trillion years of evolution and consciousness, and all you got to show for it is a nine to five fucking job. Could you imagine? You are a composite of God's own involutionary experience of itself, and you're going to work for a job to do what? To do what? What the fuck are you doing? Look out there, you out here. You're going crazy. You're going to work for a job? And you guards walking around? Y'all need to read, and or you need to check the movie Soylent Green. That's an oldie but goodie with, with Charlton Heston. Morpheus says to Neo, after he sees the truth, that they have a rule. What's the rule? No. No, no, no. Morpheus told Neo that he has a rule. After a certain age, they never wake him up because it's too damn dangerous. No, yeah, no, no, no. They can't handle it. Walk into there when you see any good Christian pounding that Bible talking about he knows Jesus. Then pull the plug on his shit and nope, waking him up. He would bug. He would literally bug if he knew what the truth was. He feels comfortable in that zone that he's been put in. Believing that Jesus Christ going to come and take his sorry ass out of his misery like he got some kind of investment. And then these people on that television telling them, you got an investment in heaven right now. Just send them dollars and you'll know. I got a place for you in heaven. And these dumb, dumbass people really believe that they can pay their way into heaven. Creflo dollar. Now that's a nigga for you. Creflo fucking dollar. Now if you don't get that shit now, a nigga with a name like Dollar, man, he's a preacher. about god damn no questions are we gonna get a question morpheus says to neo after he sees the truth they have a rule and never free your mind after a certain age because they have a hard time letting go it's dangerous morpheus says that he freed neo because he believed that neo was the reincarnation of a man that was born in the matrix a long time ago who freed morpheus and excuse me many of the others as long as the matrix exists that is the illusion the human race will never be free after he died the oracle prophesied his return now did you get a look at the oracle yeah. 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 Now, what was this white boy thinking about when he wrote this? When Dan went into the projects to find an oracle, doing what? Cooking. Can't get a woman to cook no time, nowhere, today. But they're telling you that mama was in the cook at cookies and didn't give a shit about whether you knew it or not. Would you like a cookie? I love it. I like her acting style. But the thing was missing was they switched it from the cigar to the cigarette. Mama was supposed to have the, 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 the oracle smoke the cigarette, the cigar, because the cigar was a leg bar and it was the opener, the way. That was the way. And they took the cigarette and put the cigarette in the hand, which is the symbol of the white man. You see? Because right away, the power would have been in that black man's hands. He would have been the one. Okay, said she had the little one. She told him, no, you're not the one. Okay, because she already found the one. The one was really Morpheus. People were quiet to know. That's right. Now, after.
after he died, the Oracle prophesied his return. He was coming to be hailed, the destruction of the Matrix, the end of the war, bring freedom to our people, that he was the savior. Where was the hidden city and what was the hidden city called? Oh. Now, you know, I, I just, I don't know, see these white boys, with, you know, who are they, the, the Kovetsky brothers or whoever they were? These boys were definitely dropping the science, all right? Now, we know that Zion, you take again the, the Z, you take the Z away from it, and you get the Ion, just like you get John, one more time. Now, Ion or Zion is definitely within a matrix of dynamic radiation. Again, radiation, you look at radiation again, you spell R-A-D-I-A-T-O-N, you take away Ra and Aton, right there, you got the, the symbol of light. Okay, you never watched, you never looked at the word radiation, have you? Uh huh. R A D I A T O N. T I O N. Radiation on, ion. Okay? So you're watching uh, uh, them play around with a, a genetic memory in your head. And if you don't know what's going on, you're thinking, oh, yeah, that's real cool, man. You see that? No. The last human city the la in the center of the earth. This is the earth right here. Your humanity is here. They said it was buried deep. Zion is some place that you achieve. It's not some place you go to. Okay? And they said that that boy was born. He was the one last member born in Zion. And the only two people that were actually born in Zion were who? The two brothers. The two brothers. Ah. Now, remember when he tried to jump? Remember when he jumped? What was it that they said? No, he couldn't do it. But what, what did, what's the name say? Everybody. everybody falls the first time. Okay, what does that mean? It means that every time the Creator begins to bring about the concept or perception of itself as man, it falls. Everybody falls the first time. All right? Now, the system is the enemy. Remember, the people are part of the system. The very people we are trying to save is the enemy until they wake up. Remember when he was inside? Now, that's why I tell you folks, you know, be careful when you're out there talking to certain people. Because the very people you think you want to leg up, especially family members, because they're the ones who give you the worst time. You know, they want to come and save you. Beat you on the head with the Bible. Boy, you've been dealing with them heathens again. Now, remember when he said, he walked up on him, when Neo came up on him, and it, the guy who was the, 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 uh, the, um, the one who turned out to be the evil one was named, who? Cypher. Put a little Lou in front of it. <laughs> All right, now see, now wake up, people. Lou Cypher. Now, you have to remember that the word games that are going on, the words that's being played on your head, if you're not paying attention, you don't see what's going on, okay? You, you have to understand, he was Judas. And Judas essentially was the symbol of, essentially Judas was the symbol of cancer. Because it is cancer at the point where the sun is exalted on the, on, in, um, in Aries. As it goes into cancer, it begins its fall. So it is betrayed at that point. So Judas is cancer, and that's where the betrayal happens, or essentially that's when the specific spin of the earth starts the, the, the descent of the sun in the, in the southern sky. So essentially you're watching Luce, Cypher, who essentially played slash Judas, who betrayed everyone, essentially betrayed the Redeemer at the time, who was, and you remember at the time when he was about to put out the lights of the, of the sun, and the, what do you call it, he now is banished. Lucifer was banished, he was killed off by who? Tank. Okay, now we we'll get to that point. Let me get to this point. I want to get to this thing first. Everybody falls the first time. Man fell his first time. The system is the enemy. The people are part of the system. When Neo crept up on Cypher, what did he say? See, I know somebody said. Yeah, you said, 
He said, God, you scared the bejesus out of me. Remember Bar Jesus? Who was Bar Jesus? Yes. Yes. Okay, right. There's two Jesuses in the, in the Bible. There's a Bar Jesus and there's, there's a Jesus. Now, nobody knows who the hell Bar Jesus is. Now, obviously Mary Magdalene didn't just go for forgiveness. <laughs> People didn't understand who Mary Magdalene was supposed to be. Mary Magdalene was the expression, Mary was the virgin, untouched. It has nothing to do with, uh, with what he called it. Magdalene was Mary of the world. She was the elements being used and focused into the dynamic of creation. All right? Mary just stayed a virgin, supposedly. She's just what was the material used to create the, quote, Jesus seed. But you scared the bar Jesus out of me. All right? After nine years, he realizes that ignorance is bliss. Remember when he had the meeting with the searchers? He said, after how many years? Nine years, the number of completion. He has made his full cycle. Lucifer now has been redeemed. His quiet is kept. He made his pact to be redeemed. He's out of there now. He brought light. They brought him in. Remember he said that Morpheus brought him in and told him he was the one in the whole nine yards? Well, he came down and he was living in ignorance. He wants to go back into ignorance. Okay? Now, the oracle is a black woman. Let's get to the oracle one time. Come on with the black woman. When he went in, who was in there with him? Children. Something missing. All of the potential. She was the one in the kitchen. She is the creatrix. She is the one who takes all the raw materials and creates the nourishment, the sustenance. She is the one that feeds all humanity. She gives them their reason to be. She tells them what they need to do. In all of your, in everything that you have done, everything that you have written about, about your ancestors, they've always gone to an oracle. And the oracle has always told you what it is that you were slated for. All the time. And it invariably was a woman. Because for your earthly mission, it was the woman who essentially being in touch with all the elements, being who she was, she was the one who knew what the earth had in store for you. Re helped you to remember why you came back. Who you were. Used to tell you what ancestor you were. So when she came back and the oracle, and she said, the oracle told me things changed my life. Well, essentially, it was the feminine principle, the feeling principle. Okay? The feeling principle that's missing from everything that you're doing here. When the police snatched him and started beating, Rodney, uh, beating him like Rodney King, all right, Cypher was the traitor, Lou Cypher. Uh, let me run down. I don't want to, uh, to, lost. I want to get to questions. Neil believes he can bring Orpheus back. Every mammal develops. But I check this out. Did you notice what he said? Now check this out. I didn't remember this thing. The searcher or the one who was seeking or the man with the glasses said, every animal develops a natural equilibrium with his environment except man. Man is not exactly a mammal. This is what he says. Somehow man ain't exactly a mammal because mammals tend to work in synergy with their environment. Man does not. So man is something above a mammal or as he said man is a virus right. now the only time you see a virus underneath your um, what do you call it a virus looks white to me anytime you look at what you look at you look at a cancer cell and it is pure white I'm not being I'm not about being nice I'm not being real right. you know I don't hate nobody I can't hate nobody for who they are you know when the program is called uh, for, it is uploaded, then the X button is pushed again. Every time you look at the, uh, the situation, you check out the, um, the X button is pushed. He dies and he resurrects. Reverse, uh, oh, the reverse of the Sleeping Beauty. She kisses him back alive. Okay? Check it out. All right, he's comatose, he's dead, he's gone. Uh, says no to the illusion, creates his own reality at the end. Now he is Neil, he is the one. The brother speaks to who he is. He says he's the one. Gives into illusion, illusion implodes. Now remember, what did he do to destroy his nemesis? He became him. 
so when you merge with the beast and you understand the beast there is nothing he can do he can't hide from you he cannot destroy you now at the end you got the dates in the first one remember i said it was 9 18 or oh, 3 29 wait a minute hold on let me get that that first date i want you to look at it 2 1998 all right at the last point when you go up you see the word <clears throat> 9-18-99. All right, that's the date. After he's become the savior of the world, it comes in 9-18-99. Under that, you see 3-29-98. Now, when they focus in on the part where it says systems failure, remember, when he's saying, I'm going to tell everybody who you are, I'm blowing this whole lid off, I wish I need to have the... Okay, just picture this. There are a series of all these numbers, and the camera is zooming in on one place that says systems failure. And right where the camera zooms in, it says 329-98-0-360. Right under 360, you see the word failure. Okay, now... What is significant of 360 degrees? The circle, the cipher. All the brothers and sisters who are dealing with seven know what I'm talking about. The cipher, the feminine principle, 360 degrees circle of knowledge, this paradigm, this reality, it has right underneath it, failure. Now, the first date was 2 and I'm going to close this out to start the questions. The first date, 2 1998. The last date they flashed up was 9 1899. You subtract it, reverse it, subtract, it comes out 7 0101. So I'm saying this to you, beloved brothers and sisters, today in 1999, the year of the lie. July 1st, 2001. Check for that date. If you have a calendar that shoots you forward that far, check the date. Because again, the first number given, 2 the last number given, 9 you subtract the one from the other, you get 7 0101. So the date, July 1st, 2001, is going to be a serious date. Why? Simply because. That's the time when the Illuminati was supposed to, excuse me, actually hold the elections. That's the time of beneficence. But they moved the elections to November, so they put you under the, the sign of Scorpio, so that only your emotions deal now. That's why you don't elect anybody. You essentially choose somebody who seems to look good on television. You deal with your emotions, whereas you would have dealt with your heart, with your, with your empathy, if you were voting under another sign. So they moved it over to November purposefully. Now, July is a time when it's supposed to be Independence Day. Something is getting ready to fall. They look for, um, look for a cosmological phenomenon, look for earth changes or phenomenon, look for uh, wars, look for certain... So, or look for the second coming. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but that date is significant in some way, huh? Sunday. It's a Sunday? Oh, great. First day of the month. Day of the month. All right, so like I said, you look forward, whatever's going on, if you have an ephemeris or a calendar that tells you what is in conjunction, what planets are going on, what's going on there, check with your, um, your, uh, your um, what do you call those places, observatories, to see what star systems are coming into play at that time. All right? And uh, with that, remember it says 32998, systems, right underneath that word, systems in the movie, it says 32998, you should go back and find out what happened at that date, and right under the uh, number 360 degrees, says failure. Now with that, I did not want to get too deeply into it, because for what I needed to say about Matrix, I had to show you. There were certain symbols and things inside of there that I'm just talking on the top of my head, so I just ran it down. Maybe we're going to go... We're going to go into part two, and then we can deal with that from there. Uh, at this point right now, I'll close down the dissertation and open the floor for questions. Thank you.
you can step up on the, the questions. Any questions about anything you want to do with health, consciousness, whatever it is. And uh, who gives a royal? <laughs> We're going to go past that. We're going to put our own presidency up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was trying to find that title. He shot that by so fast. It said something to do with mor morphium something. I guess the change of time, or time change, something like that. But he kept all of his little contraband inside of this book. Yeah. Okay, symbolicum. Okay, synchronicity and symbol. Oh, great. Thank you for me. Yeah, that's that's serious. Synchronicity and symbol. Well, all of life is a symbol. A tree is a symbol. It's just dealing with an, uh, uh, a dynamic, an expression dynamic of the planet. The tree is the nerves of the planet. Hey, beloved. Peace. Mm -hmm. I've been doing some studies about May 5th, 2000. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, May 5th, 2000 has been this date that has been blown up based upon what the comedic calendar Aquinas has kept. Uh, they're dealing with a comedic calendar for an alignment, uh, a planetary alignment, a Sirius alignment, uh, and an Orion alignment with the Great Pyramids. Now the Great Pyramids, if essentially you see the alignment of the Queen's Chamber and the King's Chamber, they're aligned specifically to Orion and to um, uh, uh, Sirius and Reticuli, well, which one, Reticuli, or um, I forgot the other, but I'm going to do something on the, the Great Pyramids uh, also, but um, Orion and the, um, and the uh, Sirius star system, during that time, May 5th, quote unquote, uh, 2000, there is an alignment. Remember, they're not using our calendar. The calendar you're using is, is screwed up. This Gregorian crap that we're going through is a convolution of Christianity. It was set up around some pope saying, you know, Constantine, the rest of them saying, yo, this is year one. <laughs> I mean, we've been here how long? 175,000 years. They want to start year one around their conquest. But again, remember that the Gregorian calendar and what you're dealing with is not the calendar that they're using in order to deal with earth-based changes and phenomenon. They're giving you that date to coincide with the reality zone that you're functioning in. But they're dealing with a whole other calendar, cosmological, sidereal, uh, extraplanetary calendar that has nothing to do with your reality. So the May 5th, 2000 is an artificial date. We're already in the, the, uh, the actually energy dynamic for that May 5th, 2000 situation. Long before that. We hit that long before time. Yeah. Long be yes, sir. Yes, I want to ask you about cellular phones since then. A lot of you cellular phones. Can you give me a little in depth history on that? Okay. The, the cellular phone. Um, has an output, a frequency output that, inter that, that interferes with certain uh, um, um, electrical impulses, neuronal impulses. What it does is it, it actually, it, it, uh, the, the, the low frequency waves and pulses it gives off causes you to become hyper. You, you pick up and you speak faster, you think clearer. But what it does is it artificially rushes certain, um, uh, certain cells uh, through the brain at a faster pace based upon the input of that electrical pulse in the brain. It forces your brain to work faster, but it also kills cells at a faster rate. All right? Because you think faster, you think clearer, you speak faster, but then it's just like anything that you agitate, anything that you invigorate, anything that you irritate, there is a sacrifice of cells for that higher performance. Okay, so be very mindful if you do have cellular um, uh, things, uh, cellular, but don't overuse them. Okay? Well, yeah, it can cause cancer if your body and your brain is, is, is functioning with a lot of filth. Your body will always defend itself from artificial or adverse waveforms. But if you do not take care of the body so that it can, yes, it may bypass the defenses that you do have and cause problems in the long run. Okay. Yes, sister. That's a poo. That's a poo.
Um, how is the um, medical system's treatment of cancer with radiation and chemotherapy, how does that relate to um, what you were saying about the um, genetic engineering of people that they're doing, you know, how mm -hmm. it affects us? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, who we are at this time and how we have uh, become, I guess, again, medical science has been functioning for how long? About 150, 200 years. And they have essentially terraformed us to the point where we now function based upon how our, our people have degenerated over those 200 years. So diseases that we have today are actually uh, the deteriorated health that we have. So they keep redefining health according to the amount of diseases that come up as a result of medical science. So medical science keeps redefining health. Now, with all of the introduction of these aggressive means to fight a perceived enemy, that's the problem. Medical science believes that they're fighting a perceived enemy when they set up the medical protocols for so-called um, uh, ther ther therapy or, or, or what is that, not diagnosis, treatment. Radiation essentially is the quintessential collateral damage mechanism. It kills everything in its path. It's like, let's hope to get Saddam Hussein, let's carpet bomb and hope we kill enough. So you kill about five, ten thousand people trying to get this one person. That's the specific mentality of medicine. What it would do is essentially create a memory in the cells. When you feed the cellular network, when you change the frequency or when you input a different frequency in the form of chemotherapy, in the form of radiation, the cells now have to defend themselves and they create a memory of defense in the body. What they do also is they do not completely heal. No disease is completely healed. That memory is carried on in the cellular structure because if you interfere with the unburdening process we spoke about, that interference now creates another burden. So the introduction of chemotherapy, the introduction of all these heroic forms of drugging you, creates another kind of karmic memory that the cellular structure now has to unburden in another life. So the more drugs you take when you're dealing with this crap, more medicines that you take in your body, the, the, the more the cells have to acclimate to this new invasion. This is the imposition that we spoke about earlier. The imposition of these genetic altering things that causes the burden to, to be forced. In other words, you take a pill for a headache, you don't get rid of the headache. You heighten the body's ability to not feel it. But the headache and the cause for the headache stays. The same way you repress the threshold, if the person is getting rid of cancer, cancer does not kill, beloved. Let's just get that straight, and I'm telling the brothers and sisters out there. Cancer does not kill. It only begins to kill when we override the directors of the body in its attempt to isolate the problem. When you have a problem in your body, the doctor looks at the problem, he now goes in, he takes a test, he punctures or destroys the encasement that the body created to defend itself with, and now the shit spreads and you wonder why. He diagnoses that the body has somehow isolated this, you got a cancer, look out, you're going to die, if I don't do this, it's metastasizing. Not telling you that that is the containment dynamic that consciousness, divine intelligence, created for itself. The body never kills itself. Every disease is an attempt of the body to isolate the problem. All diseases are short-termed. They are body generated for the purpose of realigning the body back to health. Anytime you interfere with that process, you create a secondary burden. And then the body has to deal with that later on down the line. That's the best I can tell you, sister. Okay. Yes, beloved. Okay. Why do you dislike uh, King Akhenaten when you speak of Well, I dislike what he tried to do, but I, I'm not, I don't dislike him. The fact that he wanted to destroy all of the gods, in other words, take away what it is that God recognized of itself. There is no one thing operating in any dynamic in reality. All of what you see is God. So there are different principles at work. 
There are different functions at work within God. We didn't worship gods. That's, that's nonsense. That's what they want you to think. We were scientific. We dealt with principles. And these principles were adhered to. These principles were given homage through respect, actually, rather than homage. They were given respect. So when you erect different animals, these animals were condensed versions of certain principles based on their behaviorisms. So they weren't gods to be worshipped. They were principles. When that happened, Akhenaten said, forget all of the specific dynamics that God expresses itself as. Forget all the names, forget all the principles, all is one. Now when you've done that, you have centralized consciousness and therefore taken the state and allowed the state to take over or to centralize a particular brand of thought that allows you to only see one thing based upon your perception. But remember, the dynamics of Kemeta U energies and understanding of the dynamics of all light came from a, a succession, an evolution of the science of being. So I know that my, my left arm is not my right. I know that my right arm is not my left foot. This is what they meant. If you say this is all one thing, then the functioning dynamic that we were created to ra recognize and represent is taken away. You centralize God, it becomes a state instrument, hmm? like it is now, and now you no longer have the divinity. Plus, you just wipe out a whole uh, section of people that, you know, it's political as well. <laughs> yeah, but you see, you can't deal with the whole because we're not in the whole right now, we are in the many. When you take, when God takes on the physical form, this, the many is the whole. You see, when you start dealing, unity cannot understand duality as unity. Unity is only unity. The only way unity understands itself is through duality. When duality is represented as itself, when it does the two dynamics of male and female, yin and yang, positive and negative, we understand the dynamics of unity in that way. So understanding unity in the, form, in the realm of duality gives us a better perspective because we see you, the unity in all of its dynamic expressions. If you take that and say, well, this is all one, when you say, okay, now, does that become a, or you express to one? All right, well, if that's all the one, you start dealing with generations from now, they have no clue because you've destroyed all the reasons for the one. Who are all the one? What, what does Enpu mean? Who is Heru? What is Ast? What is Heteru? These are dynamic expressions of the multifaceted personalities that constitutes the one you. The one you, yes. But the one you is not the one now. All of what we are enjoying is essentially the many as the one. But to come around and say that the one thing is all there is, you immediately destroy the fact that we are here to understand the many. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Peace. Peace. I have a question in mm. terms of when we speak about organic and eating organic mm -hmm. food. Yeah. One, can genetically um, created foods also be organic? And if so, how can you tell a genetically engineered food or genetically altered food? This is when you have to get into the subtle sciences, sister. This is where I teach people how to use the pendulum. Okay, and I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching a, another uh, one of your videos, mm -hmm. and you were speaking about a calendar, which is specifically dealt with the um, oscillation or the the moon cycle. Yes. So I was wondering if you could give me some names or types of calendars, not necessarily specifically with the moon, but on um, in any realm that would help me to move more in a direction within the universe looking at the universe in terms of calendar? Um, I'm not sure that what the question means, but I would tell you that um, if you're looking for anything doing around the moon, is that specific? Well, yeah, in one, of the, in one of your past videos on Metaphysics, you, you named a calendar which dealt with the cycle of the moon. Hmm. I, I, a dendera? I couldn't, I couldn't the, okay, was it the dendera? Um, 
Okay, I'll have to find that out for you one more time. As far as you dealing with anything that has to do with the moon, are you under moon? Are you cancer? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Um, hmm. That's interesting. There are books by the Llewellyn Production Publishing Companies that have that. You can find them at um, the uh, Fifth Avenue at the East West Bookstore, or you may be able to find them at Quest in the Village uh, bookstores. And Oh, they moved it. Between 2nd and 3rd Avenue? Yeah, yeah. Well, they moved it because it used to be in the village on 9th Avenue. Um, okay, uh, yeah, as, as far as dealing with the moon, they have a lot of good books around the moon and what a cycle means. Again, it means reflection. It's to reflect. It's essentially to take the sun's beams and to give... Uh, to actually give the ability to the pineal gland to function. The pineal gland does not function well in the sun. The sun burns up telepathic waves. It's at the night time that telepathic waves are proficient. So at that time, the moon is in its high and in its glory. So that's the best time to do any kind of soul searching, any type of reflecting on one's own actions. Okay? okay peace. peace, sister. That's that move, sister. Do you believe that man's beginning is at the mountains of the moon? No. Okay, well, I believe you're above the physical, above mm. the physical form. Mm. Well, yeah, the mountains of the moon, the Kilimanjaro, and around that area, down by where they say the Nile has its source. Well, essentially, that may be where they touch down. Okay. <laughs> but uh, man did not have a beginning. That is an illusion. That's the illusion that they want you to believe is real. The real truth about man is that man never had a beginning. Man constantly keeps, yeah, it keeps redefining itself. Man is the redefinition of purpose within the consciousness dynamic of involution and evolution. That's all it is. Man just keeps recreating itself. Okay, I have two quick ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is the connection between... Okay, I talk to people who follow the Yoruba philosophy and uh, and people who are with Kenneth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I find some Yoruba bear witness or feel that they migrate west from Kenneth. But I've heard one who's supposed to be a high priest or whatever say that, oh, Kenneth, they only have X amount of um, Orisha or God. But in Yoruba, we have over 2,000. I mean, he was very distinct. Like, there's no connection whatsoever. And they believe in their, um, I don't like to call it mythology, but I'll call that for lack of a better term, that they came down to earth by way of a chain. Okay? And that's where it all began, there at the spot. Okay? Um, I'm kind of like, in a cross-up, I'm saying, you know, they said, well, our history goes back 78,000 years. Kenneth is only 5,000. <laughs> okay, that, that's a no. First of all, the chain that they're talking about is the DNA helix. We all came from that chain. The DNA helix. The helix. That's the chain of life. At this time, when you, when, when people start bragging and believing that they were the first... It's all bullshit. We got to definitely be suspect of anybody who keeps talking about how great they were, 2,000 Rishis. I could give less of a royal shit not to be so disrespectful. I don't care. I'll tell you the truth. I know that there is a divinity within us that expresses itself multifariously. I know that divinity is real because I am here deciphering with you. I am here with you interfacing, and I know that you are divinity, and I know that you are Orisha. I know that you are Netiru. I know that you are Nibiru. I know that you are everything that we perceive outside of ourselves. We are that. Now, not to be disrespectful for anybody practicing anything, but if you're practicing at anything, you still ain't got it right. That's one. Number two, if you feel that you have to worship anything outside of yourself rather than just give respect, then there's something wrong. That's part of the illusion. That's part of the paradigm. 
you are, the Orisha is put into your head, you become that. I give respect to that feeling and that be belief. But there is a dynamic beyond that. That whatever it is that they're putting onto you is ceremonially only ceremonious. Nothing can put be put on you. Whatever you are is based upon involution. You yes, you evolve from the involutionary seed that is placed upon you based on your experiences. There is no such thing as anyone giving you spirit. That's like anybody giving you a cure. There's no cure to any damn thing. There is only healing that is done by divine intelligence. There are many ways for you to interface and play with the dynamics that they call Orisha, with the dynamics they call Netaru, with the dynamics that they call angels. These are interfacing patterns of light and how they, through their own interfacing with the prism of life, gives you the specific color of your awareness and thus the names that you give to these things. That's all it is, sister. And until we free ourselves of the bondage of belief structures, that's what keeps us in this paradigm of idiocy. We will always be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last way the white man came from? Oh, there are many dynamics. Really, right now, I don't care because he's here. You know, you don't wonder where the cancer came from. You don't wonder where your problem came from. You want to know how to solve it. Really, the dynamics is there is no, um, there is no creation beyond the fact that there is degeneration. That he himself studied himself and wondered why he was so different from everything and everybody on the planet because everything on the planet that was alive had pigmentation. He did not know why he did not have pigmentation. He, he deifies all animals that are white. Um, our ancestral people, so, the so-called the so natives, our indigenous peoples, used to use the white buffalo as a sign. The white buffalo simply meant that there was a change in the order the consciousness dynamic was changing. It meant that there was the death of a paradigm. Anything that is white signifies death. It believes it is the beginning. Any death is a beginning. It is not an end. So the signal of the white buffalo was a beginning. It was the signal of a time to come. Anything white shows you that that strain is degenerating and dying. So when you see a white tiger, a white horse, or these things that come out white and pale, you know it was the degeneration of a specific species. The Caucasian essentially speaks to the degeneration of a type, a consciousness type, which you as the melanated people were the original, um, the, the, the forebearers of that. The dark people, the darkest of all the dark peoples were black to the point of not being able to be seen. Their eyes did not have any white in them because there were no sclera. Their the ability to see not only physical light but the consciousness light was denoted by the skin tone color. From the darkness came the light, but in order for the light to be able to understand itself from the darkness, it had to return to the darkness and that's why black was created on your skin or as your skin. So you are the best diffusers of light because of the pigment you have. And the darkest of all the darkest people were blue black, purple black, green black, yellow black. This black was the field upon which the awareness grew. It was the soil upon which consciousness grew. The level of your consciousness was denoted in the color that you radiated. That's why you could see some of the vestigial remainders of our people. You see them sometimes in Africa, the Senegalese. They're so black they're radiating blue or even green. These were the people, the original peoples. These were the original consciousness dynamics. But as it stands right now, we just brown. What we brown from? We brown because we are scorched earth. There is no hue in the hue man anymore. The hue was what gave off the color consciousness dynamic, which connected us to those light codes that we have. Right now, we're just barren earth. There is no consciousness growing on this soil because there is no hue on the color tone. There are no tones. You understand? So right now, we, even though we have vestigial remainders of the color, which is fantastic, we still have the earth that can be terraformed with consciousness. You don't have the you anymore. You have to terraform this earth, this thing. You have to change the dynamics of this earth. Change the agreement you have to function in this particular earth so that you can turn the you that once glowed. Those are the original ones. 
That's the hue and the hue man. That's right. Yes, beloved. <laughs> That's our book, sister. I work in a, I work with preschoolers. Mm -hmm. And although personally, mm -hmm. I have never favored uh, microwaves, mm -hmm. I never bought one. Yeah. But there is one thing. Mm -hmm. I never bought one. And I would like to know the effects that microwaves have on our bodies. Okay particularly little small children mm -hmm. that are three and four years old. Yeah. Very often when the microwave is being used, mm -hmm. they're directly in line with mm -hmm. those waves. Right. Can you speak on that? Please? It's a very good very good point. I'm I have um I, I confess to be a user of microwaves at times. Um but I know that I have a energy dynamic that can help to put it back into into check. But children, never bring them around a microwave. Definitely not around a microwave. A microwave kind of destroys food from the inside. It essentially heats from the inside. Any kind of heating is a destroying mechanism. Okay? So, I, you know, all of us guilty of that in, in heating our food. doesn't matter whether you heat it from the outside in or the inside out. You destroy it. Uh, the microwave uses short waves, and short waves are most destructive. They heat the fastest because they, they come like that. Instead of going through it, they, they bombard. And what they do is they, when they, they reach to the center of it, it explodes from the inside. The, the, the microwaves explode when they hit. The idea is that's why it's spinning like that. It, it, it's hitting from all sides, and it's exploding at the center where the molecular structures are. So that's why it heats from the inside. Sometimes you can feel the top is cool, but if you reach the bottom or anything, it's hot as heck hell. Well, it's exploding from the inside. So it's a, it's a, it's a way of reversing destruction. You know, it's instead of heating from the outside in, it destroys from the inside. But microwaves tend to destroy um, uh, linkages, DNA linkage. And um, they, 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 they do that from shooting from those Leos low earth orbiters they have this um, this microwave technology which is a weapon that can destroy essentially the, the 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 bonds the hydrogen bonds and the links in the dna so you have to be mindful of the fact that microwaves are forms of weaponries they are forms of inducing as a matter of fact they can also entrain information into your head when they are attenuated and used on a longer or more softer wave band they, this is what I was going to speak to you about, dealing with, um, with um, artificial telepathy. Um, artificial telepathy uses your bones because calcium is an electrical, um, has an electrical um, um, ion. It, it feels electricity very well. That's why people who've gone and visited the, the, the pyramid sometimes hear voices because the whole of the inside of the pyramid is based in limestone, which is calcium. So it's a very good electrical conductor, calcium. What they do is they've taken the electric certain wave patterns and using your bones and your teeth and your head, they can vibrate sound by entraining it into your bones, sound and voices to make you think that you're thinking certain thoughts and it's not your own. So be very aware of your thinking. That's why I said at the end, you may not know whether or not you're thinking thought or whether thought is thinking you. You have to be very mindful of things that you think you're thinking because they have done things now to be able to entrain thinking through the bones because the bones, again, are an electrical filter. So, no, be, be mindful of the, the fact that the, uh, the microwave is dangerous. I know it's dangerous, and sometimes I want a quick heat for my, uh, for my, uh, my tofu or whatever, you know, I kick it in there. I'm guilty, you know, mea culpa. Is there a place where I can get information on this microwave? Yes, sister. Um, yeah. Um, I suggest that you call, um, there is, a, I think there's an information brochure. No, better still. You can call to, um, what's the name of that? The, try the American Natural Hygienic Society and see if they're still going, and ask them if they have my, um, information on, like, on, on, um, on microwaves. Or you can actually go down to one of those stores. Uh, some of the health food stores have books that have that. Yes, brother.
Okay, beautiful. See, we're all here. Barnes and Nobles, low radiation to silent killer. There you go. Thank you so much, man. Yes. Hi. Mm -hmm. There's a movement on right now um, about our DNA. Mm -hmm. There's a group of people going around saying that we're supposed to have trans friends. Mm -hmm. And they keep they're holding workshops and getting people and they claim to recode the DNA mm -hmm. so that we can plug in. We're supposed to have 12 strands so that we can plug in the 10 that are not plugged in right now. Mm -hmm. I want to know how bad it that is. Well, yeah, there is a there is a um, movement afoot to try to um, to resuscitate um, the memory that has shut down the other the the the, the, the codon um, the the codon links, uh, which then gives us the uh, the spiral that is supposed to be encased. Uh, we're supposed to have 13. That's the Christ one. There are supposed to be 12, uh, three helixes, and inside of those three is supposed to be uh, um, three, six, nine, uh, four specific light filters on a, on a subatomic quark level that is supposed to constitute a flowering of the other, of the other uh, 12. Or uh, the other um, four, a uh, twelve. Yeah, uh, they're supposed to make up actually thirteen. It's supposed to be twelve, and as the twelve works in, and and uh, to become one with the energy, a thirteenth, uh, a thirteenth dynamic or a, a a a halo is created, a halo of light that now becomes a ridge. Okay, so you you, you figure, um, for for instance, if you if you're seeing this thing glowing, this is comprising the thirteen. Um, the 12 um, uh, the helixes, then it creates a specific energy dynamic that creates a ridge which constitutes the 13th, the encapsulation or the Jesus. They talk about the Jesus strand. Um, yeah, they're dynamic, but they want to do it artificially. They want to start playing that up based upon accelerating evolution. It's called evolutionary acceleration. And by doing that, they'll tend to try to bring you or bring themselves into a space where they start dealing with interdimensional communication. So I know that there is interdimensional communication. All you got to do is go into a trance and begin to activate on that particular etheric level. And you get the same energy dynamics that you would if they were actually there. So you can go into the possession of the drums and start dancing and start filtering into other dimensions like our people do anyway. Right. You see, you don't need to do it like the white folks need to do it. Oh, Kim, artificially we're going to grow this one strand and we're going to attach it right there. Oh, isn't that great? Okay, bring that one over there and we have the things for me. That's bullshit. We don't need to do that. Right. Know ye not that ye are gods. We are already that. Thank you. Just one question. Mm -hmm. Could you just comment on the silver mine control? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's CIA. Silver mine control. Jose Silva. Yeah, yeah, I know. Jose Silva. Yeah, I heard about Jose Silva. Jose Silva and um, your boy from, um, from uh, what's the boy who sells that stuff on the streets? Huh? No, not York. Um... Who's this white boy that uh, trained the CIA? No, no, no. White boy that trained, um, he's got a book out, uh, Dianetics. Real Ron Hubbard. Now, Ron Hubbard is a bad motherfucker. You're sleeping. Huh? Oh, yeah. The government wanted his. Yeah. In fact, in fact, yeah. In fact, um, the silver mind control was part of what they teach. That's the next level of when they're ready to initiate their military men into covert ops, okay? Promoting what is known as remote viewing. Now, the remote viewing situation we have with ESP and espionage, most of the people who brought remote viewing to the CIA were trained by L. Ron Hubbard. Remote viewing, the same person that was out there uh, talking some shit to your boy Art Bell, he was a silver graduate. He was a, uh, a member of L. Ron Hubbard's inner elite. Remember, you got to go through certain stages. 
before you get into L. Ron Hubbard's close circle. And he has a council of 30. Oh, yeah. Remote viewing is the same thing your ancestors used to do by way of the currents. There are ways that you could set up sympathetic energies just by, just by manifesting the name, just by putting your hand on the Bible. Like when you come to see me, people wonder, well, how is it that you know what's going on? Because I get into empathy with you. All I have to do is sit there with you for a minute, and everything about you begins to radiate in my being. Once you do that, you're talking to the spirit of the person, and that person doesn't have to say a word. People are wondering, what, how do you know this? The same particular dynamic, using vectors of light, using empathy, using consciousness wave patterns, using the wind, using light, using all of these, you can interface and see through people's eyes. You can interface that way. As a matter of fact, I, there, there is a web of life. That's the principle behind um, remote viewing and uh, silver mind. There is a web of life that connects everything that is living and non-living. The non-living are connected in one level of strata, the living connected to another level of strata. When you tweak one part of that dynamic, you affect another part. I could take your picture right here and go to Bombay, India, and send a specific light frequency to your picture and affect you over here from Bombay because the filters that came together to create the image that was you is comprised of you. Oh my God. All right, so every picture you take, you that's why some of the ancestors said, I don't want you taking my picture, you capture my soul. They're right. The light filaments that your aura gives off, that gives the picture of you, is what it is that they're actually working. And I can work with that. That's why the ancestors used to set up these dolls that had the likeness of you. And used to, that's why they rode those people crazy in Haiti. And why them motherfuckers had to run out of Haiti. <laughs> because they don't use their voodoo anymore. They done got Catholic. See, that's what Christianity did to your shit. It took your magic and kicked it up the ass. Until you get your magic back, you will not know who you are. You will not be interfacing with the Orishas and all the rest of these dynamics. And then once you got that understanding of it on the, the scientific plane, on understanding on the organic plane, you ain't got to put names to shit no more. You just use mine because the greatest civilizations on the planet or on any planet or on any reality did not have any technologies. Yes, it is. So understanding energy dynamics. So silver mind control is essentially what it is, silver mind control. And it's about you focusing. Remember what I was telling you about feeling and desire? It's taking desire and feeling, understanding the field of feeling, and then focusing it through desire. And that's what silver mind control is about. <laughs> <laughs> interesting because essentially interesting to note that Imhotep was the father of medicine he was the grand vizier he was the creator and the designer of the so-called step pyramids not only here but over in the North American continent as well the South American continent he essentially was so bad that the Netaru came down, or the Netaru came down and took him as one of them. Because he was of a lineage, he was supposed to have been seated by one of the Anun Anunnaki anyway. And his mother was the one who gave him the knowledge of all of the herbs and the, the science of, 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 of healing. 
And as a matter of fact, Imhotep did not become a man. Imhotep was essentially a title. Just like Heru is a title. Heteru is a title. Isis is a title. It's not a person. It is essentially what you ascend to based upon the quality that that particular deity represents. You wear the mantle of, of Ast. You wear the mantle of Heru, of Heteru, of Herukuti. All these are mantles, just like what the brother was wondering, why do you want to get rid of all the gods? These mantles were essentially what constituted the fixtures that made up the groundation or the foundation of reality. So to completely say that the pantheon does not exist and all that exists is the one was to completely destroy the balance that was created by the expression of the one thing as the many. Okay? Now, the destruction of, of Himhotep is necessary because medicine wants that to happen. Um, <laughs> you know, for, for one of a better word, the, the, the medical church or the medical temples of, of the West um, cannot see the true father of medicine, who Imhotep was, um, who essentially was known as um, Asculapius in the Greek. And Asculapius was actually the son of Hermes Trismegistus, or the so-called god called Jehudi, Toth. And there is a good book that I think you should get called The Virgin of the World. Okay? By, by Maitland. In it, it has an incredible conversation between the father and his son. Asculapius is essentially Imhotep. Or Hermes Imhotep. Well, Imhotep. Yeah, the first. Actually, the first. You want to deal with the first. The son of Jehudi. Yeah, but it's, they're not said to who he is. Jehudi. That's how it's pronounced. Yeah, Toth. And um, what you need to do also is to um, read another book, which is excellent, called the Poimanda. The Poimanda. This is another book by Hermes speaking to his son. Incredible books. And, and you have to understand what's being said. Again, having the prerequisite in metaphysics is, is excellent for when you're dealing with it. Um, the divine Poimanda uh, and the P, well... It, the, the Greek is P-O-I-M-A-N-D-E-R, but it may be spelt as P-Y-M-A-N-D-E-R. And the other book is called The Virgin of the World. Excellent dialogue between uh, Asclepius and his son, and his father, I believe. And in, 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 the, in the Poimanda, it shows you the reason for homosexuality on another spiritual tip, on a psychological tip, where the specific... The specific soul does not create on the physical realm. And as a result, it does not know its task. So the masculine principle, or the feminine principle that does not generate life, cannot understand the, the principle that is evoked within it through its feelings as a mother or as a father. Therefore, if it takes on another life without having that experience, it comes not understanding what it is in the next life, and therefore plays a dual role within the same body. So you have to deal with some of these things. It's deep. Of course, that particular action can be sidestepped by the beneficence that you give, the love you give to other children and all these things. But if you just coalesce by yourself and be by yourself and want to be by yourself and don't play upon that, which most women today are not doing, and most men, certain men are not doing as well, you don't understand what fatherhood is. Fatherhood is not just taking care of a child because you don't teach the child how to be a child. The child teaches you how to be a parent. So the child becomes the father to the man or becomes the mother to the woman. So that's the, that's the synergy. That is the flower of life. That's the continuum that goes on the fact that we are all here on this dynamic journey just enjoying one another. You die, go to war, you fight, you kill. You've done this before. Krishna told Arjuna as he was standing there ready to go into battle, scared to death. He says, why are you scared? You did this so many times before. You died and come back. This is your thing. Stop worrying about death. Leave that mentality of finality and the end of days and all that shit alone. You are a forever creature and you keep cranking this dynamic of infinity into this beautiful blossoming body you got. You flower each time you come through the womb. Every time you take on the flesh, you got a whole new chance to unburden yourself. And this is what you're here to do right now. 
we've just unburdened ourselves with the realization we've exchanged today. Know thyself and heal thyself. Love thyself.